On today's part of my take, we have Hard Knocks episode one. We are back with Hard Knocks, the first sign that football is right around the corner. We have Olympic gold medalist Gable Stevenson. Awesome story. He won the uh, Olympic gold medal with a buzzer beater in wrestling. He's also a barstool athlete, so we talk about his shirts. Uh, we have Damon John, our good friend Damon John, in studio to talk about his new audio book. Not a book, audio book. Damon John in studio. We have Hot Seat Cool Throne and then the Mount Rushmore of athlete nicknames. We go extra round on that one. And we're brought to you by our friends at Movement Watches. Movement Watches in a tiny apartment in Southern California. Two college dropouts teamed up to create a watch company that broke all the rules. These are guys. This is a this is a true American uh, story of guys making it. So the watches that they created are some of the best watches ever, and they don't break the bank. That's the best part. Movement watches have the look and quality of a four hundred to five hundred dollar watch you're paying for at a department store, but they cost a fraction of the price because they were built online and they own the process from start to finish. You get a beautiful watch shipped right to your door for free. And if you don't love it, you can ship it right back for free. And they have blue light glasses. You need the blue light glasses if you're in front of a computer all day. The EverScroll blue light filtering glasses are a game changer. I wear them when I know that I'm going to be staring at a screen for a very long time. It really helps with eye strain and poor sleeping patterns and... I love the modern style of the frame. So if you want to elevate your look with style that doesn't break the bank, then join the movement, MVMT, and get 15% off with free shipping and free returns by going to MVMT.com slash pardon. Again, that's MVMT.com slash pardon. Movement watches. Join the movement. You will not be disappointed. Some of the best watches out there and a ton of different styles. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by MVMT. Watches MVMT.com slash pardon. Go right now. Get 15% off. Today is Wednesday, August 11th. And Hard Knocks is back. Football is back. It is the first sign that football is back. It's a rite of passage. It's like the first leaf falling off of a tree in the fall when Hard Knocks episode one drops. It feels like you, you get that warm feeling of, oh, I've been here before. Oh, we have maximum amount of football ahead of us. It felt so good. Just the sounds of the pads hitting against each other. That's to me when football wasn't even back when they started Hard Knocks. Hold on, Hank messed oh. something up. Um, I have yours. Can you clap again? I have yours. You can, we can... All right, so you can use mine. But, yeah, just pick up from where you are. Hold on, PFT, one sec. Okay. Is he good? All right, okay, yeah, so just pick up from right there. Yeah, football wasn't even back at the start of Hard Knocks. Football was back about 20 minutes into Hard Knocks. We had our first mojo moment of the football season. Yes. And the pads hit each other. And I don't. I still don't really know what a mojo moment is. And I think if you were to ask, if you were to inject Mike McCarthy with truth serum and ask him what a mojo moment really is, he probably doesn't really know. It's just... It's a cool thing to say, it, and so, but but when you heard those pads click together, I know that that was a mojo moment. Here's I'm, I don't want to get Cowboys fans down about episode one because it actually was a, a good episode. Like we've had a couple hard knocks busts the last few years. I can't even remember. I the last year was definitely a bust. Uh, the mojo moment though, it, it really was just Mike McCarthy being like, "I want to play a clip." of Austin Powers. And here's how yes. I can segue this in. Here's how I can fit this in somehow to make it like a teaching moment, a coaching moment. I don't know. And it gave me a flashback to Fred Hoiberg when the Bulls were really struggling. He started playing like old school in Animal House to try to loosen up the team. I just feel like that's when your coach is playing Austin Powers to try to teach you football. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just projecting here, but that feels a little off. It was a little bit off, but it, you're right. I think he, he really likes the movie Austin Powers. And I don't think that Mojo was from The Spy Who Shagged Me, by the way. I think that was from the other Austin Powers, So he the first one. So he's like, he's shoehorning two Austin Powers clips 
into his his big team meeting at the start of the year. Uh, it was yeah, it was like something that Michael Scott might do. Yeah, where he's like, you know, what's a really funny movie I enjoyed that I'm going to make you guys watch? like. Mike McCarthy is going to end up playing all the 80s sex romps for the boys. Like they're going to play PCU at some point. He's probably going to put on a clip from Porky's in the locker room and be like, this is how things were back in my day when I was growing up in Pittsburgh, boys. Yeah. I mean, Mike McCarthy. So a couple big, big picture thoughts I had was number one, we do this every single uh, summer in August when Hard Knocks comes out. We start hyping up the team that's on Hard Knocks. We all take everyone in our fantasy draft like two rounds too early because they're hard knocks heroes this year with the fact that it's the dallas cowboys who always have too much hype and now they're on hard knocks i i can't see a world that the dallas cowboys don't win at least 15 games and cd lamb should be a first rounder and amari cooper should be a first rounder and dak prescott even though his arm is about to fall off should be a first rounder and same with zeke so this like, my brain already can't handle having the Cowboys on hard knocks with their hype and then more hype on top of the hype. And I'm just, I mean, they're, 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 they are going to win the, the Super Bowl. And obviously, in my deep down, like, thoughts, I know they're going to probably win, like, five games. But right now, I'm sitting here like, yep, Jerry Jones, he doesn't have to kill a man. He can just wait until the second weekend of February because they're going all the way, baby. Yeah, Dan Dan fucking Quinn is back. That's what I'm going to start calling him this year because that guy is dropping all the F-bombs in the world. He's got the the hat backwards. This is a new improved Dan yes. Quinn that we're looking at. He's rebuilding himself this year. I think he's really taking the opportunity to not be the head coach where now he can get back to being aggressive Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator. I mean, I don't think he took the backwards hat off the entire time. Colin Coward would have a stroke trying to watch him coach defense. But Dan fucking Quinn is back big time. Zeke, I actually do think that Zeke is going to be back this season. He looks good. Because he looks – He's it's physical Elliott this year. The dude has the six-pack back. He doesn't have terrible. the belly anymore. What? <laughs> physical Elliott. was terrible. Physical Elliott? Please don't. No, no. It's, it, no phys- please don't. Physique I know. Elliott, phys- I, I heard you. I, please don't. <laughs> no, I'm, no, we're gonna make this happen. I, he does right look skinny, top, though. By the way, he looks skinny. Say, he looks yeah, skinny. I, he looks he looks very skinny. I don't think that the the eat motion where he's eating the soup or the cereal that doesn't work for a guy that's back to being skinny again. Yeah, no, he's he, like sipping on a green uh, a green juice. He looks he looks skinny. I I I noticed it before they talked about him looking skinny. Like the, when you first saw him come on the screen. I have a question for you, PFT. Uh, sus or not? Buying another man a birthday gift. Uh, they have birthday week on the Cowboys. <laughs> that, yeah, it's, it's like back to back Dak and and Zeke. Uh, I I think it's I think it's just boys being boys. You, I'll put it this way: if you're at camp with somebody, then yeah, buy them a gift. Watching Zeke trying to wrap the gift, by the way, was very funny. Just buy a bag, dude. Just buy a bag. He should have gotten a bigger bag to put Dak's birthday bag in. Yeah, he, he it was um like the YouTube going on YouTube, everyone has been there. It's it's wrapping a gift and tying a bow tie. Those are the two things that every person has gone on YouTube being like, "Let me just fire this up real quick and I'll uh, I'll be able to figure it out." And then it always goes too fast. But uh, I actually think they did that on purpose. Billy pointed it out because last year, remember, was the famous birthday party between the two of them uh, during the COVID lockdown. So this year they were like, let's make a real note of it. They were just getting each other presents here. Um, I think – so, all right, so the number one moment from the entire episode, we have to give it to the I – want, I want to try the cake. Uh, the, the offensive lineman who is huffing and puffing – um, I, I can't remember who it was. Uh, I think he was a practice squad last year. But he, that moment was so fucking good. Isaac Alarcon, can you can you get that pronunciation for me, Jake? Huffing and puffing, being like, I want, I want to try the cake. I want to try the cake was uh-huh. so fucking good. But here's my question: the it feels like we have a little tension already. Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott. Jerry Jones and Mike McCarthy. We had Mike McCarthy when Jerry Jones started talking about how he wanted to kill a man and then started crying and rambling. Mike McCarthy was side eyeing him, being like, What the fuck is this guy talking about? And then, like, Jerry Jones coming out to the practice field and being like, Hey, when can we get Dak back? Like, can he just mm-hmm. do some short throws and stuff? I just, I don't know. It will be interesting to see because it does, it does feel like those guys might not totally get along. 
There was uh, there was definitely a little bit of tension, but I think there's always tension with Jerry Jones. You never know. Like Jerry doesn't tell his coaches what he's about to say in the press conference in front of him. And I don't know if he was crying or if his face was just leaking from his most recent surgery, but Mike McCarthy was definitely like squirming in his seat. Mike McCarthy is not a guy that likes to see another man express emotion next yeah. to him unless it's anger. If it's anger or like pure joy, then he's fine. But like any actual emotions, not so much. And then when Jerry gets on the phone, I actually thought that was the best scene of the episode. When he got on the phone trying to see if Dak could maybe do short passes instead of long, maybe he can throw like a ping pong ball or something. And then he hangs up the phone and uh, he takes his breakfast sandwich, the biscuit with the sausage I think, the, uh, the I think it was a McGriddle. I think it was a McGriddle. It was it wasn't because I recognized the wrapping around it. It Got was it. like it was something that you might find at uh like a Panera, like a Panera breakfast sandwich. No, that he takes the, that was a McDonald's. They was blurred it? out the M. It was a McDonald's. Oh, they they yeah. blurred it. So yeah, it was a McDonald's. Have, so he and then he salts. He the salted McGriddle his McDonald's. Out. He he dumped a whole shitload of salt onto his breakfast sausage yes. at the end, which I'm pretty sure if you looked up the nutrition stats, Billy, maybe you can take take care of that from the nutritional aspect. See what uh, see what the daily amount of sodium or the amount of sodium that's contained in one sausage McGriddle is, and then we can estimate how much extra salt Jerry Jones was putting on that. I did I did notice he also drinks his uh, coffee black. That's a fucking man after my heart right there. That's just hard work. Uh, salt and coffee gets the body going in the morning. What do you got for me, James? We're looking at Alarcon. Alarcon. Isaac Alarcon. A-H-L-A-R-E-Cone. Uh, I want to push back on one thing, though, PFT. Mike McCarthy did show emotion when he found out that Dak Prescott's uh, arm is fucked up, and it made me think, is a head coach finding out that their star quarterback might be injured? I think that's the most devastating news you could ever give a head coach. Like, I'm talking, you could tell them their family just got kidnapped, and they'd be like, all right, well, we'll figure out after practice. But go uh, the trainer walking up and being like, hey, it's a muscular thing, we don't know, he he got fatter in the moment. Like, he, he, he kind of, you could see him get a little winded just from that news, and I, it made me realize that a head coach getting that news, I need every head coach to be mic'd up when they get that type of news because it is absolutely devastating. It's like snuff porn. I, Yeah, I, I don't know if he got fatter in the moment or if his body spontaneously put on another layer because Mike McCarthy is the king of layering up in all these clips. He's all, He's got like a, a long sleeve T-shirt, a T-shirt underneath that, and then maybe a vest or a polo shirt on top. He's just he, – he looks like he's prepared for any weather. But, yeah, he was like – you know, immediately he was like, fuck, you got to be kidding me. But I think we'd probably have that same reaction if Ben DiNucci was the guy that was yes. – Ben DiNucci did not look great no. in this episode he, of Hard Knocks. He, Every time they showed him actually attempting a pass, it was either an interception or it was like over somebody's head by 20 feet. Well, his, his – the DiNucci, which I think we should call it this, is him – Falling backwards in the in the uh, pocket and throwing the ball like he he's always kind of half his body's half falling down trying to avoid a sack while also attempting a throw. So I think he thinks he's Patrick so it, Mahomes. It's an extra element. It's a sidearm throw <laughs> as he's turning away from the pass rush, yes. and then he misses it like three yards to the outside. But yeah, that every clip that they showed of Danucci, it uh. It, it, it wasn't great. The other thing I, I noticed was, and it's going to take a lot of getting used to, is Micah Parsons wearing number 11. Yes. That is, um, it, it, I was watching it. I was like, this guy weighs 205 pounds, and he's a linebacker. And then I looked up his stats, and he's like 6'2 and 250 pounds. Yes. The 11 totally screws up my brain. He Micah Parsons is going to be nasty. I love watching the moment where uh, guys realize that he is – a first round talent for a reason and he's a special player when they were like you could you could they had the clip of being like holy shit number 11 is fast and Michael Parsons also just likes to snack complaining that at Penn State they had snacks at the sideline in the uh, the Dallas Cowboys like Jerry Jones if you watch this episode 1 which I know you will and you're listening to this show right now get some fucking snacks on the sideline come on like, get some snacks for at least Michael Parsons. That's your first-round pick. That's the guy that's going to fix your entire defense, allegedly, just by drafting him. Get some snacks for him because he was hungry. He was chowing down on orange slices at halftime, knowing he didn't even have to go back into the game when he was calculating how much sitting he had to do, and he was still, like, ravishingly hungry in that moment. 
that's one thing that I realize is that uh, you know preseason football sucks when like even the guys that are playing the starters are bummed out that they have to sit down and watch two and a half hours of preseason football yes. after they get, but he was just like, God, this is going to suck. Do we have to do this every week? Yes. And Van Der Esch was like, yeah, especially if you're injured. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which guess what? You're on the Cowboys. You're oh. a linebacker. You will be. Yeah. I, another thing I, this is kind of like looking ahead to the future. Cause it's something I read earlier today about Randy Gregory. So I had a little clip of Randy Gregory. A lot of people forget that he's on the Cowboys and he's active this year. Uh, he went to rehab. He's getting his life together. But the, you know what they did, like the way that he gave up smoking weed, because I think like point zero 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 one percent of people who start smoking weed actually get addicted to weed. And I think Randy Gregory like is one of those guys. But to get him to stop using drugs, he's now smoking a pack of cigarettes every day. Whoa. So instead of smoking weed, he's just he's just blazing through through cigs. That can't so they should good. let Randy Gregory do cigs inside in the defensive room. Um all right, other things that quick hitters. Uh Kellen Moore is way too young. Like that when he was trying to talk to the offense at halftime of the preseason game, I was like, Holy shit, this guy's young. I don't know, he's gotta grow a mustache or something. Um, I it's something about his look. He needs to add some age if he wants to be considered uh, a real guy. And I know there's young head coaches well, Jerry, now, but he still looked very young. His baby face. Jerry likes to keep one guy around like that at all times, like the presumptive head coach in waiting that's a lot younger and is like his guy just to keep the head, the actual head coach on his toes throughout the season. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's see. I think that was about it. Uh, Billy, Billy took notes as well. Billy, do you have some notes for us? Well, we pretty much covered a lot of it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cake, the cake. The cake. Really the cake was awesome. Oh, the and cake, John, John Bones was Fossil great. explaining uh, his vasectomy to like a room full of alpha male 22-year-olds. That was a great moment. Yeah, they're like, wait, so... You don't come anymore. It was like you talking to all business yeah, teams, trying much. to figure out exactly how a vasectomy works. Uh, I also had um, there was Charlie Fuck Around and High School Harry. Yep, like two guys that that Mike McCarthy made up. High School Harry. I thought that was a nice little nod to our guy. Yeah, little Sasquatch. Yeah. Um, I don't know what Charlie Fuck Around is, but um, but I liked hearing. I just like hearing coaches cuss because you don't get to hear that on like the NFL films and all that stuff. So anytime you hear a head coach drop an F bomb, I think that's always a real treat. Uh, let's see what else. Did also, I have? there was one other also note that I had. M- Mike McCarthy in that one scene when everyone's in coaching attire and he's just decided to wear like an Ed Hardy, uh, going out shirt. That was bizarre. What was he doing there? Was he just trying to prove to everyone that he's got more money than them? That was a cold special. I think he bought that. I've seen that shirt before. <laughs> that and yeah, I think he had an unbuttoned down to the collar. Yeah, oversized, like ill-fitting dress shirt when everyone else is wearing sweats just to be like, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. the coach. Don't worry about it. Oh, you, you, you know why he got upset when, when Dak strained his shoulders? Because like Mike McCarthy, we know he's a huge analytics guy uh, going back to his introductory press conference where he just made up the fact that he's been studying analytics. Yep. Uh, I think his major analytics move that he put in this offseason was just tracking Dak Prescott like wildlife. Like he was a, like a great white shark that he's been tagged off the coast because, you know, after that first practice, he's like, oh, man, Dak, Dak moved around too much at practice day. We're going to have to calm him down and keep him on the sidelines. I think realizing that Dak was not going to be able to track be tracked to practice that really put a whole wrench in his new analytics system yeah 575 he, he recorded a 575 that made no sense but um and and shout out to Dak for having the wherewithal to not throw the cake because he was about to throw the cake and then he realized that he's got mm-hmm. probably needs Tommy John surgery so he didn't throw the cake so that was a uh, I think everyone was holding their breath in that moment like is Dak about to throw this cake and and hurt his arm even more I just I don't know what's wrong with him. I just know that when you have to start consulting, like, MLB training staffs, that just feels bad, right? Yeah. That it's, doesn't it's, it's feel good. It's definitely not a good sign. I, I think we're going to get, like, daily updates on Dak Prescott like we got with Andrew Luck the other year when it was like, okay, now he's throwing a Nerf ball. Yeah. Now he's throwing a high school-sized football. Now he's he uh, threw a, an NFL football underhanded twice today. And now he's going to do long toss with a, with a baseball over at the Rangers facility. It's going to be an ongoing saga of whether or not his shoulder is going to be okay. But, yeah, um, yeah football's back. 
I like it. back. Football's back. All right, let's get to Hot Seat Cool Throne. Hot Seat Cool Throne is brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Coors Light is the official beer of slowing down summer. Summer always feels like it's the shortest season. We're already halfway through August. People have been prematurely calling the end of summer. I'm here to tell you, hold on. Hold on, the summer is not over, and Coors Light is here for you. It is here to chill. It is literally made to chill because Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, cold package. It's literally made to chill. It's crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies, perfect for a moment to unwind this summer. You crack open a Coors Light. It's delicious. Summer's there. We actually just played some uh, disc golf, which the video will come out next week during Grit Week. We were cracking open some Coors Light after each hole. It was delicious. It felt like summer. When you see your Coors Light can, make sure those mountains are blue because Coors Light is official beer of slowing down summer because it's the beer that's made it chill. We want you to savor every second of summer. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Coors Light, the greatest beer ever created. Fact. Hot seat, cool throne, Hank. Uh, my hot seat is Dennis Schroeder. Yeah. He was offered a four-year, $80-plus million deal last year with the Lakers. Get to play with LeBron James, Anthony Davis, two good players, some people say. Mm-hmm. He rolled the dice. He rejected the deal. He said he wanted $100 million. He yep. bet on himself. Uh-huh. Today, he signed a one-year, $5.9 million contract. Minimum, that's the minimum you can uh, sign for with the Celtics. So he's, he's betting on himself again. Yeah. Well, this cool throw on Celtics, dick. it's good for the Celtics. Like, you're going to get the hungriest, you know, Dennis Schroeder you can get. Well, you know what? I, but that's I'm tough. Always, that's, that's also, tough, last year bet. was also the hungriest Dennis Schroeder. I, I'm always in favor of guys no. betting on themselves. Uh, this is the downside, but he just keeps on doubling down and betting on himself. Eventually, it will come through. Has to. Right? He, he was posting videos of him like skateboarding while he was still a free agent, which I thought was insane. Uh, keeping his legs warm. Don't you eventually get to a place in the NBA where if you ju- if you just play long enough, like a team has to offer you a contract for a lot of money, right? Yeah, no, that is true. That's absolutely true. It's a veteran minimum where if you're over ten years, you just automatically get ten million dollars no matter what. There we go. We call it the Juwan Howard rule. So he's going to bet on himself for how many more years does he have? Another like he, well, this one, one year. year. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying like to get to the ten year. How old is level. he? Whatever. Let's just say he's got four more years 26. of betting on himself. Okay. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Very close, Hank. Four more years of betting on himself. Then he officially the bet will come through, and he'll just be in the NBA until he decides that he's done with the NBA. I love it because he w- he was trying to speak it into existence because I think at the time when he said that he wanted a hundred mil. Um, everybody was like, what the hell? There's no chance that he gets it. But by putting that out there into the universe, they call that the secret, right? Yes. If you just pretend to be something like we pretend to be the best sports podcast, we we've are. done it long enough that it's actually t- come true for yes, us. Yes, exactly. So good luck, Dennis Schroeder. Uh, and then staying on Also, back. your name is Dennis, which is just funny. Like Dennis, and maybe that's just because of Dennis the Menace, but and Dennis is like just... Those are, thing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I think we need Dennis to... Dennis Rodman, but he was the worm. I don't know. We need to work on a rebrand for Dennis Schroeder because I, I think a solid nickname for him could help him get up to that next level. Like Dennis flies in Boston, though. Dennis, yeah. Mm-hmm. Dennis Leary? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. He just changed his name to Dennis Leary. Mm-hmm. And we're like, that guy's funny. Or Dennis Leary. Also and, is, and get like a gold tooth. Yeah. He also plays a good firefighter, right? Wasn't that Dennis Leary? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, uh, he, yeah. Backdraft. And but, truck commercials. No, yeah. bad, tr- bad truck commercials. So. Yeah. Not our truck. Not our truck. All right. Your cool throne. Ben Simmons. Yeah. Happy learned how to putt. He's taking our he's taking our advice. He posted a video, him and Rondo, two of the most lethal shooters in NBA history, just fucking wedding threes. Both back to back to back. I think they hit like eight in a row. I, it was it was three and two, but that's pretty much yeah, eight in a row. Whatever. I had some people pushing back when I was like, this just proves how good NBA shooters are because I really do think it's true. Like even guys who can't shoot, Ben Simmons, I guess he can shoot, he just chooses not to. But Every guy on an NBA roster is incredible in an empty gym. Mm -hmm. Like, he just is. I bet you if you put Dwight Howard out there in an empty gym, he would make all his threes, too. Or most of them. That's just how good they are. I think think Ben Simmons, though, he needs to just kind of walk before you run in this situation. Just post some clips of you dunking. It's got to be answer that question first. Are you afraid of baskets? Yeah, it's got to be very exhausting. I guess Sixers fans have moved on, 
but it's got to be exhausting to see the same thing every summer and then nothing change. I do kind of hope, though, that he comes back next season and whatever team he's playing for, if it's not the 76ers, it will be the 76ers. I hope he's just Ooh. sick. I hope he's just They like, can't trade him. Ben Simmons, I'm, I'm, I've said this before, and obviously he's not going to be on the Bulls now because the Bulls have got Lonzo Ball and they've made a bunch of moves, but I'm kind of low-key addicted to Ben Simmons because he really is like a penny stock. If he could figure it out a little bit, it would it would he'd be incredible. Like he would be, you know, a starter on the All Star team. Yeah, because he's got all the other stuff: defense, passing, dribbling, being like a, ma- uh, a matchup problem. If he could just figure out when to shoot and have the balls to shoot, I'm telling you, invest now. I'm thinking the moon. Wobistics. We need the moon. We need Elon Musk to tweet about Ben Simmons, and then yeah. he'll just. I need boom, Ma- pop. I, I need Matthew Bevilacqua to. To, to sell me on Ben Simmons, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Wobistics. That's not a spoiler. Yeah, it's, well, That's it's just a statement of fact from Soprano. It's like when you do a uh, when you do an interview with Jordan Belfort. Here, sell me this Ben. Yeah, exactly. Boom. Done. Nice pun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, PFT, your hot seat cool my hot seat, um My hot seat is going to be Joe Buck. Mm. Joe Buck's hosting Jeopardy this week, and uh, everyone's going to hate him. I think uh, Jeopardy James actually roasted him saying that uh, – th- the people at Merv Griffin said whoever's going to be the next host of Jeopardy is going to have to quit their other job. Yep, and that's so he's saying Aaron Rodgers. He's saying for for the sake of everybody who watches NFL football, I hope they give the job to Joe Buck. Yeah, kind of roasting. That's kind of Jeopardy James's thing. Is like he's when he's not on Jeopardy beating people, he's just ro- he's just at home watching Jeopardy, making fun of the people that aren't as good as him. It's like a KD situation with I, him. I would miss Joe Buck very much. I would miss him too. I uh, think that people have come around on Joe Buck for the most part, but I don't think that people realize the hole that Joe Buck would leave in like Sunday afternoon announcing if he were to leave. And I think that Troy would just continue to call whoever got replaced Joe. Yes. I just need I, I love hearing Troy Aikman say the word Joe on Sunday. Mm-hmm. But it looks like the guy that's going to be the next host of Jeopardy, they kinda said that they were negotiating the contract. His name's Mike Richards. That was confusing when I Whoa. first heard that Mike I thought Mike Richards was at Colorado Rockies games full time. Oh now. all all time all time uh, comeback if if Michael Richards was the Jeopardy host. But but this is a different Mike Richards. This this guy was the dude who was in charge of leading the search to find the, it's like the the Dick Cheney yeah George Bush I'll find your next vice yeah president. yeah guess what no one's as good as me after vetting everybody very thoroughly hire myself hire, hire yes. me yes um, so yeah Joe Buck is gonna be on Jeopardy this week uh, it's just disgusting behavior from the Jeopardy fans just not liking Joe Buck agree you a, kidding me a, a disgusting act use that, that is a yeah. disgusting act. use that hate for something that needs it like Andrew Siciliano yes in four weeks, I'm going to start mentally bracing myself <laughs> now because I know week one. Yeah, I'm it's gonna, on. It's I'm on like Donkey Kong, Jake. Me and heat. you, we're fucking I, facing each other. I like Hanson too. Nah, you don't. But yeah, I'm, I'm already mentally ready okay, for that. Okay, good, good. Uh, my cool throne is going to be Andrew Cuomo because mm-hmm. he resigned and he used our advice which is just saying, I'm Italian. Yep. I'm not a pervert. I'm Italian. That's the Mike Tirico defense as well. It works well anytime it's been deployed. So he did resign today. Uh, many people are saying he's going to come back in like a couple of years and try to run again after he seeks treatment for being a pervert. Um, but yeah, Andrew Cuomo, uh, the Italian. I'm not a pervert. I'm Italian. I just touch people. There's no, there's no coming back from that. He needs. I need to see more mixtapes of him. Touching people, though. Yeah, I mean, make he it did it weekly, himself. Make it a weekly thing. It's still incredible to to be like, hey, guys, I don't, I, I'm not inappropriate. Here's a highlight reel of me touching a bunch of people. That wasn't really what he was going. We, he, someone should have thought that out a little bit better. I think it was very funny, though. Oh, it was hilarious, but it was not exactly what they were trying to prove. It more, he sh- more should have been like, I don't touch people and just deny, 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 like most politicians. Yep. Just um, if, as long as you don't admit anything, you don't ever have to face consequences. Tough for Italian people, though, because like they have to look in the mirror now and be like, am I a pervert or am I Italian? I think it's you a, just say it's uh, a thin line. It is a thin line. Between. It is a very thin line between Italian or pervert. We should actually do like Rick Patino, Italian or pervert. Italian, yeah, Italian, Italian, Italian definitely yeah, Italian, yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, Italian. Yeah. Uh, John Calipari, Italian, or Italian, pervert. Italian. Yeah, also um, Bill Cosby, Italian or pervert. Uh, mm. I'm gonna go pervert, pervert and I, I, also R word. I think he's I think he's pervert. Yeah. How the fuck is he out of jail? Uh because of technicality. 
That's the worst technicality. They, of they time. said they essentially the prosecutor <laughs> said technicality said, now. Get, said uh, hey Bill Cosby if you agree to uh, provide testimony like background information in the civil trial we won't use anything that you tell us in yeah. the criminal trial. Then they were like, hey, my fingers were crossed. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're going to take... That was Cliff Huxtable telling yeah. us that. That wasn't Bill Cosby. So, um, yeah, just bad prosecutorial, mm -hmm. prosecutorial misconduct. Mike Tirico. Yeah, no, Italian he's... Italian or per pervert? Both. The rare okay, combination so he's of both. The both. Yeah, right. the Venn diagram. All right, so you don't... Yeah. But yeah, I think you have to be one or the other. I think binary. I think Italian Mike is the one that okay. he can he can Is he more Italian or more pervert? That's the question. So I, it's been so long since he's been publicly a pervert that I think he's just become Italian. Italian. Okay. And Cuomo is just pervert he, right now. He needs to refine his Italian heritage. Right. Maybe yeah, maybe go like a uh, host football night in America for a while. Yeah. And people okay. forget about it. All right. Go uh, do the Olympics. Also, it doesn't help that you have the nipple ring. I think that mm -hmm. that's what he has to do. He has to like have a, a ceremony where he gets the nipple that's ring removed. That's big pervert behavior. Yeah, nipple rings like, is like, hey, regular sex isn't good good enough for me. I want my nipples to be pure so you can tickle them. Yep. Um, also, Cuomo went with the great defense of I just love New York too much. That's why he had to have his <laughs> yeah, hands all yes. over it for he so long. He loves it so much he had to step down because he loves New York. Mm -hmm. To the point of, if he could fondle New York, he would do it. Yep. But he won't because he's stepping down in 14 days, which gives a lot of leeway there for the fondling. Wait, There's you, 14 days of fondling you can still give left. A, you can give a two weeks notice to yeah. resigning in disgrace? Yeah, he gave two weeks. 14 days. That's amazing. He's got to do a transition. He's got to be hands-on for the transition well, process. So what's, I, who's going to replace him? Uh, it's a, a female. So yeah, he First needs, female governor of all time in New York. There you go. So, so what really has to happen is... He's going to take his successor under his wing, both wings, yep. and then show her the ropes. Ropes, yep. Uh -huh. yep. It's, uh, it's almost like sh like going to uh, uh, Top Golf with a date, showing her how to hit yeah. a driver. <laughs> yeah. That's what Cuomo's doing right now. You really got to get out there. And Here's how you sign legislation. Let me get behind you real quick and show you. You got to press the flesh <laughs> with the people out there. Um, all right, my hot seat is Twitter. Because Jay Cutler's back. Jay Cutler's back on Twitter. It's been about eight years. I don't know if Twitter's ready for him. I don't think he's ready for Twitter. I it's a uh, I don't know. They're oil and water. But either way, Jay Cutler's back. Um, he I don't know if he knows what Twitter's like now because he was like, I'm gonna get banned from Instagram, so I'm going to Twitter. I feel like Twitter's way worse than Instagram in that respect. But, How so? Uh, in terms of uh, unfiltered, Jay Cutler might. Twitter might not go jive with that. Twitter, the actual Twitter, like app or the oh, people actually, on yeah, you're Twitter. right, you're right, you're right. The app is more forgiving. You're right, you're right. Than Instagram, yeah, it is. Except for if you try to post Olympic highlights, right? Then it is less forgiving. But, but either way, it's good to have him back. He actually was a great tweeter back in the day. I actually don't even remember Jay being on Twitter. Oh, he was actually very, very funny it's, on Twitter. It's going to be tough for him to get that check mark though, because Fucking everybody knows mark. the real Jay Cutler I think is the bodybuilder. I think he got it. Did he? I think he got it. Yeah, he did. I just saw a tweet. Yes, he the, got it. Well, yeah, it can't be at Jay Cutler. That's reserved. For Jay has tweets. Yeah, no, he's back. He's back on Twitter. Uh, Yep, he's already going into, uh, let's see, Williamson County Board of Education special called meeting. I wonder what that's about. That's probably just the curriculum for next year. Yeah, definitely. That discussing. Uh, all right, my cool throne is the Lions because the Lions have no turds. Uh, that's Dan Campbell said that they got no turds. So officially mm -hmm. they flushed all the turds out. They have no turds. He gave credit to uh, Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn for doing a great job, which was nice because that's rare to give the guys who you, who you replaced credit, but all the turds are out. I'm ready for some Dan Campbell football. I think I'm expecting the Lions. I'm going to bet the Lions in September. Yeah, so um, Jake and I were listening to Greeny on the way out to disc golf today, yep. as is custom, and he was saying that like he's going to take the under on uh, not only the Lions but the Texans, and they might not win more than like three or four games. This is a major greenie weenie alert. Mm -hmm. If greenie feels that strongly about something when it comes to gambling, you fade greenie fade, big fade time. Him, yeah, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen with the Lions? You know, once November rolls around or December, historically not the best time of year in Detroit for football. But I do think that the Dan Campbell effect is going to be very real 
in September. Yes. They're just going to, you know what they're going to do? They're going to outman people. They're going to smash people in the face. He was also talking about the Browns and how they have an improved defense. Their first round pick. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were, me and Jake were like, what how, What did the Browns do to like yeah. really shore up that defense? He's like, I'm really excited about well, the secondary. Well, they got Jadavion Cl Clowney. No, but that's not he, what he was talking about. Yeah, I know, but that's that's a, like, th there's nothing. J Jadavion Clowney should stay in the NFL for the next decade and just hop from team to team so everyone can have that take of, well, they have Jadavion Clowney now. If like, J the Titans were a terrible defense last if year. If Jadavion Clowney can put it all together again. Yeah. If Jadavion Clowney can do that play that he did against Michigan, Every single game this year, I think that the Browns will have a much improved defense. But Jake, what was Greeny talking? What did we discover that Greeny was talking? So about? we're looking at who they got. Obviously, Clowney, Greg Newsom, the second cornerback, Northwestern. Okay, yeah. he's actually a really good player. He's a, he's a good. He's player. actually he's a very very good but, player. But Greeny was talking about him like he's oh, about to become yeah, yeah, the most valuable player of the NFL. He is a good player, but yeah, I understand. I understand where there's a little conflict of interest. Also, hot seat. I totally forgot, but. Uh, we did play disc golf today. We're going to be posting that on Monday. And I think ball golf, as our instructor told us, that's what he called it, ball golf. Uh -huh. Do you guys play any ball golf? Is now on the hot seat because disc, disc golf is the future. It is absolutely the future. We had a great time with the boys. So tune in on uh, Monday for Grit Week starting off. So uh, cheap, too. It is. It, did we pay? It was like $10 to get into the state park. Oh, but, that's it. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. could have stayed forever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but ball golf. That was very funny. He's like, you guys play any ball golf? Like, excuse me? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to need like, you well, to, to call it. from he, now he's on. He's like, well, I have to figure, I have to call it something different than what we're playing. Uh -huh. I also said, like, you could just call it golf. When golf we first too. got there, he was setting us up with discs, and I was like, uh, I said, I mentioned the word Frisbee, and he legitimately stopped in his tracks and, like, stared me down. Yeah. And, uh, you don't say the F word. He's like, you mean disc? I was disc. like, oh, my God. Disc. I'm so sorry. And you're like, shout out Kyle. He play was awesome. two on two game. He's like. Oh, doubles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out Kyle. Great yeah. instructor. I awesome player. I feel like discs, or the word disc is only now used in disc golf. Like you were saying yeah. froth, and I couldn't tell if that, like. No, you're not supposed to say that. Yeah, because you were saying too. that in my head, I was like, I feel like he's probably yeah. fuming right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely was getting, he, that was a microaggression yeah. by me. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Jake, hot seat, cool to run. Uh, hot seat is taunting. So the NFL came out with new Saw rules that. today. Yep. And. Automatic ejection for two taunting violations with fines and suspensions also in play. You love this, don't you? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Fun for the game. No, 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 no. no, no you no, no, love no. this. I think you no. think it's fun no, for the game until it actually happens. Yeah. 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 So when you win it, the biggest in, in theory, here. you're yeah, like, course. I really love taunting. But when you see like Marshawn Lynch grab his penis <laughs> as he's jumping in the end zone, you want You'll to, be you puking. want to, yeah, be like this. There's no place for this in football. Mm -hmm. So with two violations. Two uh, violations. Jail. Does, does that mean you can go all out on your first? Or will they still fine you for the first? Oh, I don't know. It's got to be a loophole. Still get flat Belichick too. will find the loophole. Yeah. Just wait. Whenever there's a new rule, just wait till Belichick implements it. And then you'll be like, okay. So he'll have everyone come out and just taunt or, for the whole first quarter and then be like, nope, no more taunt. Or he'll teach some of his players to learn how to cry on command so that they can go to the ref and have tears coming down their face be like, that guy just taunted yes. me. Boom, 15-yard penalty. Yes. Yeah, and uh, Cool Throne is friend of the program, recurring guest CJ McCollum. He was elected MBPA president. Yeah, oh, for nice. Chris Paul. So nice. He's got a big voice. We were in his fantasy league last year. All right, we got to get him on. Talk to him yeah. about some like, does it does it suck knowing that LeBron's still your boss? It's a good question. It's, I would like question. to hear Save from that question NBA for me. PA leadership. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll hear from him soon. That was probably part of the like, you know, transfer of power. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, doesn't CJ have a winery? Yeah. So LeBron was like, "All right, dude, listen." We'll set you up this winery, but I'm going to be the real boss. You know what? I, I, I'm actually like a little bit worried about this because my favorite part of CJ's game now is his wine drunk tweets yeah. that he puts out when he's watching other people play. He might have to curtail that if he's also representing those players. True, true, true. Uh, Billy, your hot seat cool to my hot seat is vegans, so Impossible Burgers, a new study came out on them. Turns out that they might be seriously damaging to your kidneys, according to a study Good. That was released. Good. So, but the funniest part is... I love vegans. That's I feel bad for them. That's terrible. The funniest part is the part that may be unhealthy was their fake blood. So the They fake, put fake blood in yeah, it? Yeah, they make their burgers fake bloody. Why? What do they put in there? Why? It's like some soy protein this is, or something. This is how far people will go to just not eating a fucking burger. Like, just eat the burger. And it might be harmful to your health. 
All right, vegans, wait, you got to figure this out. I can't. Wait, so, no. Bill, Billy, what was your, your source on that? Because I, I saw an article about that, but it was coming from a group called GMOScience.org, which only exists to say that all GMO products are bad. No, no, but the, the study was not by that. It was they by, just found the they study? They published a study. Got it. Okay. And they just commented on it. We really need a better, like, uh, fact check for studies. True. Mm -hmm. Because um, you got a lot of studies. My other. Where do you find all these no, but, studies, so by the way? One time, like when you you can tell Billy is kind of bullshitting something when he prefaces the fact with "it just came out that." Yeah, and also tries to move to this cool throne while we're still on. <laughs> yeah. This. My other. Wait, 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 hold on. Oh, time out. Time out. I wrote time out. Two key words. <laughs> two key phrases. Billy says it just came out that, or they're now saying that. Yeah. So anyway, where do you find your studies? <laughs> This was deep in my bag of hot seats, <laughs> going last. I had taunting, and I wrote it down. I literally think Jake looked but over. But tell me where out. you found no your studies. I want to know where your studies are. Because uh, I, I would like to also read the studies. NCBLI.com. <laughs> Billy's, Billy's got a library also, of studies. Uh, okay, my real hot seat is the Alliance <laughs> Football Club. A new documentary is coming out. And actually, Firefest is on the fire seat because it yeah. is now going to be the not the Worst disaster. All right, so we're gonna watch. We're gonna watch that and do a, a documentary review. Perfect. Promise. Okay. Promise. Uh, my cool throne is my quarterback bracket. Sam Ellinger has been taking reps with the first yes. team offense uh -huh. for the Colts. Let's go. And as I say, Sam Ellinger was going to be better than Trevor Lawrence. Yes. So we're just one yeah, that was step a 12 12-1 upset, right? Exactly. Holy Ooh, shit. First, first, first seed. Also, he's a great quarterback now with these new taunting rules. If anybody gives him horns down, yes. boom, 15 yards. Exactly. Billy, I love you this. I'm now rooting for Sam yeah. Ellinger just so yeah. your quarterback bracket Billy was found correct. a market inefficiency. <laughs> yes. My other cool throw is the Jets defense. They're just doing amazing in training camp. Yeah, a bunch I saw of that. their secondary is awesome. Just yep. like taking everything out of the air. Just like uh -huh. it's gonna be great to watch them play so well. Well, but they so don't good. get to play against the Jets offense every time. No, 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 but, no, but that's the defense, defense is so defense good right now. So good. So good. Yeah, yeah, Robert yeah. Sala is such a great yeah. defensive coach exactly. that he's yeah. got them. They're gonna be they're going up against Bears. what many people said was the most talented quarterback in this the draft. Not Billy. Not Billy. And they're just picking them off left and right. So that's incredible. So they're amazing. Yeah. And I'm rooting for them very hard. Yeah. Uh, cool good though. job. By the way, just a reminder, I just popped in my head. Uh, we need to make sure that we bring Mario Party for Grit Week so we can play on the bus. Mm -hmm. So, Jake, can you be in charge of that? You got it. All right. Oh, also, um, as Peyton Manning taught us, Zach Wilson might just throw like two perfect spirals. Yeah. And that's why the defense is too many, having such a good job too catching many, him. Yeah, and, and if he throws 28 interceptions his rookie year, it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's get to our interviews. We got uh, – which one are we doing first? We're doing, let's do Gable. Let's do Gable Stevenson first, and then we have Damon John coming up after him. Before we get to Gable Stevenson, uh, a quick word from our friends at BetterHelp. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Life is full of stressors. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have. Your life is probably stressful. It can be small stress. It can be big stress. You're probably carrying it around. You're thinking to yourself, oh, I just got to get through this week. How many times you said to yourself, I got to get through this week and then it'll be good. I got to get through this week and it'll be good. No, there's probably some stress that uh, you have deep down and maybe you're not feeling down and out and depressed or like you're at a total loss. But if your stress is high, your temper is shorter than usual, or even if you're starting to feel strained in any of your, your relationships, you could probably use the chance to unload. So unload the stress and get it out. Talk to someone who's completely unbiased about your life, someone who isn't going to judge you or take sides on anything. It helps to just talk. So BetterHelp is customized customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised at what you might gain from it. See if it's for you. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash PMT. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash PMT. I actually, we saw a tweet from a listener uh, a week ago who said that they use BetterHelp because they heard it on this podcast and they've been feeling a lot better day to day. So go to betterhelp.com slash PMT. Get 10% off 
your first month at BetterHelp.com slash PMT. Okay, here he is, American hero, gold medalist, Gable Stevenson. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. He is an American hero. He is a gold medalist in the heavyweight division of wrestling coming straight. He went from uh, Japan to Minnesota last night. He is joining us. It is Gable Stevenson. I so Gable, I got to start with with uh, my hand up. I said that you have the perfect wrestling name to be in the WWE. I didn't realize that you were named after Dan Gable, the greatest wrestler of all time. That's a lot of pressure. Was that a lot of pressure growing up that you were named after Dan Gable? It'd be like naming uh, 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 like a kid like Tom Brady or Peyton Manning or, and being uh, like, "All right, go, Arch just, Manning." Yeah, just try to try to uh, see see how you do at football. Man, um, no, nah, not really that much pressure. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I am named after a legendary wrestler, but I just just stick to what I do best, and that's win, and just go out there and put on a good show for the people. So, I mean, when I got to the Olympic Games, it was kind of like a, a a fast forward of Dan Gable to me, and just for me to go out there and, and keep the, the Gable namesake with Olympic gold on it is uh, something special. It was I awesome. It, it yeah. was awesome. It was an awesome match. Can So, can you explain to – we were trying to ex- understand it. We're not huge wrestling uh, guys, but the way that you won – can you break it down how improbable it was and how like incredible to have a buzzer beater for the Olympic gold against a guy who I think, correct me if I'm wrong, had has he's the, the defending champ, right? Uh, he was the defending three time world champ. Earlier in that day, I de- I beat the def- earlier the, the day before I beat the defending Olympic gold medals from 2016, and so I um that's probably like the equivalent to throwing a a hail mary fourth quarter in a Super Bowl, I guess. Yeah. So. I don't know. I can't even describe how I did it, but near impossible, but impossible is never. Would you say, is that the the biggest comeback that you've ever had in terms of how many points you needed to get in such a small amount of time? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Normally in matches, I'm, I have not been down that much, but, you know, I'm prepared for the worst. And so I, when I went out there, I was I, I had a big lead, and then I got rolled up a couple of times, and I was thinking in the back of my head, like, oh, I'm about to take silver. And I was like, cannot happen. And I, so I looked at the clock, 13 seconds, I – Took him down one time, and I the ref let us up, which is surprising because you're supposed to have like tops, like um, time on top. And when he let us up, I was like, I got six seconds to pull off a miracle, and I just kept spinning the corner, and he gave it up, and it's just it was crazy, indescribable time. It's it's hard to even like tell you the emotion I feel about it. And I've, he, I, yeah. I, I've I've heard that in situations like that, um, for like an elite athlete, time almost slows down a little bit. Is that how you felt in those final six seconds, like? You were you were seeing things in slow mo, like thinking one step ahead of them, or was it just like let's go out there and let's make something happen? It was just like, it was just pure heart, like let's go out there and make something happen. It was just I was, when I was spinning behind, I kept I was like peeking at the clock on one of the sides on the corner of at the corner of my eye, and I, as I got through, it was just like damn, I got behind them and I looked at the clock and it was like point two, and I threw up the two because like from my points and I just like knew I won. I ran over. Coach gave me a hug, and it was just—it was crazy. And then afterwards, the uh, so it was, it was a guy from Georgia, the country. They they basically protested it, right? They protested it. They ended up losing another point, so you're even better than that. And then he like punched a wall while you're doing a backflip. That's an all-time moment, just through and through, like an incredible, incredible moment. Yeah, man, he was—he was most definitely heartbroken. He went backstage and he was throwing stuff. He was punching every wall. He was just screaming, but. I mean that that's how the game of wrestling is. You you he worked his whole life for to come to Olympic Games and win and I worked my whole life to come too and but how to think of it as like it's like a it's like a do or die situation and that day I didn't want to die. Yeah, what would what would you say is most improbable because as an American uh wrestling fan, my my knowledge base is limited to what I saw you do and then remembering watching Rulon Gardner back uh, when he was going against the Russian dude in uh was it Greco-Roman style, right? So like yeah. your win compared to his win, which one do you think is more impressive? Uh I would got to say I mean Rulon's got a got a crazy win against Karelin, you know, Karelin was going for his fourth gold medal. And Rulon stopped him, but I mean, in my sense, I think um, freestyle in a sense is a, a lot harder than um, than Greco because you can you can take shots on the legs, you can you can get cheap points off off easy shots and stuff. And so I think um, we both had phenomenal wins. In my sense, I'm gonna just say, me for me, yes. yeah, I did a good job for him. He did a good job, but <clears throat> I mean, 
point two seconds left on the clock. That's you can't beat that. It's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Um. All right. So this next question is totally my question, not from uh our good friend KB who wrestled at Kent State. But you have uh a crazy amount of like offensive weapons: high crotches, low singles, ankle picks, super ducks, sweep singles. What would you say your your best offensive move is? Uh, probably my best offensive move is a uh, snap down, go behind. I use it the That's whole time. Yeah, just just hit the fake, hit the shot, spin till you can't spin no more, yeah. and just just keep going. Tween, tween. Do you have now as as like f- to make it uh relatable to our listeners? Like, I I would assume your friends when you get drunk, they sometimes be like, I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna see if I can get him down or something. Do you just do you just body everyone like in a even in a <laughs> playful way? Like no one does. When was the last time one of your friends was like, "I'm gonna try to 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 sneak attack Gable and get him to the ground"? My my homie, um, a couple weeks ago, like uh, so uh, a couple a couple of my football friends were we were chilling at the crib one day, and he um, one of his one of his homies came up and he was like, "Hey, I know I can beat you 15 seconds. Let me try it out." And so he came through, and I just I had to flip him up right quick, do my dude job <laughs> on him. He didn't rush me after that, but to this day he still says he can beat me in 15 seconds for some reason, but. Normally, um, normally none of my homies ask to wrestle. It's just like there's no point. But like, I it, when I do go out to places, people will be drunk and stuff. And I do. Let's wrestle one time, please. And I'm like, no, no, like not right here. It's wrong time. It, yeah, it's it's one of those things. Stuff, yeah, it's one of those things where you you know you everyone's wrestled with their friends, you know, like roughhousing, and then they're like, if you ever are with a real wrestler, it's so crazy how fast, quick, and like technically sound everyone is. Um, so I, I wouldn't fuck with you in that respect, but I'm sure like, like I said, when, when friends get drunk and they're like, oh man, I could take you down. No, you can't, but go, go ahead and try. Well, what about this? What if it was me and big cat and Hank all at the same time? So what, how, how much weight is that in total? Like I'm about 190 now. Yeah. It'd be like 500 maybe total. Like 500 pounds. The three of us know. all taking it on at once. Could you beat all of us? I don't know. I saw that video y'all wrestling on Instagram. I don't know who it was, but that was, you know what I'm saying? Someone, someone's gonna have to train y'all better than that. Oh, who shit. was that wrestling? I don't know. I don't know. Was that was, Billy when Jose took been. a dive? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. If, if, if that's how wrestling over there at, at the bar stool headquarters, then <laughs> you might, I might need to bring a trainer to y'all. Does it? Does it get annoying? Um, do people like constantly say, "Oh my God, you're so incredible"? Like, when are you gonna play football? All the time, yeah. And and, and what's the answer to that? I mean, you're. It's like I'm doing pretty well with wrestling, or is there some at some point you might consider playing football? Because I think when you watch, you do a backflip afterwards. You're like, this guy, you don't see anyone move like this. Maybe Aaron Donald, like guys that big, don't move like you move. I mean, I've uh, I've considered playing football for the. I talked to actually Coach Fleck of uh, Go for Football, and he he wanted me to come out to um, before I went to Olympic Games to come come play for a little bit, but I told him after the Olympic Games, I give him a, a an official decision. So I'm considering playing football. I would I would hope one day that I can get a trial with the NFL. And um, I mean, I, there's some teams that have came and have mentioned me to some some agents and stuff that have, that have sparked interest in me. So I mean, it'll be cool to, cool to go out there and play football and be in the NFL for a little bit. I mean, if it, if it comes, yeah, it comes. that'd be okay. <laughs> If it doesn't, I got I got another route I can hopefully take, and hopefully everything will play all right. So you're you're six one, two hundred sixty pounds. Do you have to cut weight to get to two hundred sixty, or like how much weight could you put on? Do you think if you want to play football, I could I'd probably get up to two eighty five with the right right meal plan, right lifting, maybe even probably two ninety. I mean, my, the highest I've been was two seventy two seventy five. So I've, I've been up there. I mean, I still I think I still keep the agility, but with the right football training, they're training different than ours. So with with their program, I might. I might shoot up quick, but who knows? What What about um your like lifting regimen? What to put into perspective? What do you you know squat? I I do you bench? I I don't even know if guys bench anymore. Like what do you, what do you usually do in terms of like max weight on all the uh, big lifts? Uh, I haven't maxed out in a long time. Last time I maxed up probably like a year ago, but I was pushing five plus on squat, deadlift, um, bench. I was pushing about three seventy five. This is about this is about a year ago. Um. What else is there you can max? 
calf raises. I mean, that's pretty impressive. You did that, that's pretty damn impressive. I, I do. I get a pretty substantial calf raise regiment going on right now. What is it? What's the, what's the thousand club? What what are the three? That, lifts? Deadlift, bench, and squat. So you can almost get to the thousand club without you can eliminate one of the lifts and almost get to the thousand club. Hey, I can eliminate bench, and I'm already in a thousand. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's fucking insane. What's, what's it like just being, uh, for example, in an airplane and looking around and just knowing like. I could kill anybody on this plane with my bare hands. Like I am the champion of of every environment I'm in. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't know. I haven't really thought like that. Either. But it is, it is crazy. Like sometimes it'll come to my mind. Like, yeah, what if like a random person just came up to me and like try to like flex something and swing on me? And so yeah. I mean, I, that that is something to think about. But I've never thought about like I'm like the like walking around. I never have felt like I'm the the baddest man anywhere because you know what I'm saying I like the I like to be a regular person. So like. When my time on a wrestling mat comes, that's where I'm the baddest. Other than that, like people would tell me outside of the outside of the mat, they're like, "Gable, you're the legend. You're you're like the baddest person on earth." But when I go out places, I just it's just a regular me. Like I don't I don't mention nothing about wrestling unless someone comes up to me. I hate um, even talking about wrestling outside of it. Like I just like to I like to chill. Like talk to me. I would rather talk about like Warzone and and other stuff than wrestling outside of the wrestling match. What, what do you think of the hacker issue in Warzone right now? It's like it's you, you can't even play the game anymore. You can't because dudes are getting so good with the the wall hacks and the aim bots and the they got the controllers that are that are hitting the hitting every shot. And then keyboard players are too good. Like look at Tifu. I see Tifu on um TikTok about eight times a day hitting sky shots and three sixties off the motorcycles and kids are just too good. So I, I play for fun. I play to just enjoy myself, but there's some there's some really do, good dudes out there that I watch. But the hacking is garbage. They need to get they, it's hard to get rid of, but Activision's got to do something about it. Do you play with a uh, controller? Controller, yeah. So right I I always feel like if you're using a keyboard and mouse, like that's I, I've done it a couple times just to see what it's like, and the amount of like aim adjustment that you can make it's so much more accurate to play with a mouse. But I just I have more fun playing with a controller. Controller, yeah, it's more easy to play, to, to play with the controller. Like the mouse is, like like you see, like the mouse, you can flick it real quick, and you can hit the shots easier, and you can get your your field of view is better. Mm -hmm. And if you got a monitor, your FPS is all that is way better. So those dudes, those dudes are some crazy. But if Tifu, if you see this, I want to play one game with you. You got my word. Oh, there Tifu, we go. Make it happen. I agree though. The video games should be played with controllers. Um, I have a question about beef. Do you still have beef with AJ Ferrari? No, me and AJ Ferrari have no beef. Um. I mean, I squashed all the, when I saw him in person at the national tournament. I squashed all the beef, you know. I don't like um. I don't really do all the the internet talking no more. Back in the day, I used to, but now I don't need to do all the internet talking. You know, it gives people um, it gives it gives people clout that's undeserved and that's not worked for. So when I when I come to show up for a wrestling match, I come to show up to, to dominate, and I don't need to do all the internet talking. You feel my emotions on the mat, and you'll see me for for six seven minutes on a wrestling mat that I'm out of there. No so talking. that must have felt good when you went up against uh, Mason Paris because he called you out and said he was going to embarrass you in the Big Ten uh, finals, and then you you've beaten him every time you've wrestled him, right? Yeah, I mean that was, that was a really like a a heartfelt one because um I mean I didn't wrestle him at a tournament, and all of a sudden it turned into I was I was dodging him. You know me, do I look like someone that would dodge someone like that? Most no. definitely. And so his time came where he got whooped on live TV. He got made a fool of, and will I do it again? Most definitely, it's not even that hard with, with him now. <laughs> I, I love, I, I love it. the attitude. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. So let me this just going based off your your natural ability to just to be like the baddest man in a room. Uh, which of these two names uh, would you rather work for? A guy named Vince or a guy named Dana? <laughs> <laughs> Start the bidding war. Yeah. yeah, let's go. Or a guy named Roger. Yeah, yeah, you got all the options. I got I, I got a lot of good options and uh, it's I mean it, it is really crazy that I made it to this point you know like um I remember young trying to trying to get to this point you got to put a lot of work and you got to put a lot of effort in and there's a lot of times you want to give up but like I said your life can change in 13 seconds just like my did and so it's just I mean three good dudes that I would like to work for start the bidding where I'm here well yeah. it's crazy too because wrestling I would say is probably the hardest sport in terms of commitment like you guys what wrestlers go through to get to that level is insane okay last question the Roback question use code PFT on Roback.com for 20% off your first purchase R-H-O-B-A-C-K dot com code PFT they make the best performance polos and the only performance polos we wear you never had to cut weight because you're a heavyweight right 
Nope, never cut weight. So that you you do get to pass by that part because I know that you have teammates that are like that. Oh, yeah, that yeah. is straight insanity. What they do to cut weight. It, it, it is it is straight insanity. There's guys on the team that are doing 15 a week, and it's nice. like, and sometimes we'll we'll have a duel. We'll do a Friday Sunday duel like Purdue versus Indiana because they're right next to each other. And guys got to make the make the first duel like 125 pounds, and the next duel, and then Saturday they'll probably get up to like 130 133, and then Sunday morning you got to make it back to 125. Whoa! Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. You, so do your teammates kind of hate you because you just can always eat whatever you want? I, I room with the I room with the people that that can that got a little leeway. So uh-huh. I, I stay away from them little dudes. You know them little dudes. They they be like four foot eleven and getting cranky and stuff like little babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're of town. They're psychos. Yeah. When you were a kid, when you were growing up, and you first realized how good you were at wrestling, what was that like in terms of the competition? Because I have to imagine that. You were probably like if you're a young kid that's just getting started wrestling and you're dominant at it, other kids' parents like freak out a little bit, like in football sometimes, where they're like, Why is this kid able to kick everybody else's ass? This is dangerous. Did you have any experiences like that where other parents were, were afraid of letting their kids wrestle you? Oh yeah, most definitely. Um there's there's probably many there's there's most definitely many times where I was um a lot more dominant at a young age and a lot of parents were scared to have their kids wrestle to me because I I was really hard headed back then. I just like, I went out there to like physically like beat you up and push your head in the mat and make you look like a fool for a couple minutes. But as I got older, I knew like I changed my, I changed myself and I changed like, I evolved to the game and I try to make myself as more presentable person and and go out there and respect my opponents. But at the same time, I'm going to show you respect, but I have to dominate you for the time being. And so it's it's just how the game goes. You have to go out there and win. Like I said, it's, it's do or die. I don't mm-hmm. come. I don't go to the wrestling at to die. I come here to to live my next life and and to keep progressing. So, yeah, for sure, most definitely when I was younger, I was just a I was a dickhead. But <laughs> <laughs> now, now now I just now I just I just like doing what I do. Yeah, you're now, now you're a dickhead with a gold medal. Yeah. So yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, last thing. So, uh, you are a Barstool athlete. So the NIL, we have t-shirts that are on sale right now. Gable gets 80% of everything that we sell. So if everyone wants to support Gable, uh, they're sick t-shirts too. It has, we have the comeback shirt, which shows like how much you were down with six seconds left. And then we have one that like, you're an American hero. We'll tweet them out when we, uh, when we post this show, but congrats, man. It's, it's awesome. That was such an awesome, like when you think of the Olympics, uh, you know, in, in Tokyo, you definitely had one of the defining moments because it was such an unbelievable match. Most definitely. It was, um, some special, some I can't describe, I um, still haven't took the time to think about it, but yeah, most definitely everybody go grab your shirts. Yeah. Just, yep. I put my time on a show. I thank you guys for letting me come on. You know, I'll see you guys again. Always. Yeah. Of course. All right. Thanks Gable. Appreciate it, man. Good to meet you. Yeah, thank you. See you later. That interview was brought to you by our great friends over at TickPick. If you guys don't know about TickPick yet, you should learn now. TickPick is the original no-fee ticket site that guarantees the best prices on sports and concert tickets. Guess what's back? Concerts. Guess what's back? Attending live sporting events. Why pay more on other ticket sites for the same seats that you'd find on TickPick at better prices? I bought my tickets for Limp Bizkit on TickTick or on TickPick, but you know what? Show got canceled. That's a bummer. But I still went to TickPick, got the best rate there. Games and concerts are back, and Tick Pick, no, not Dick Pick, it's Tick Pick with a T, needs to be your go-to for tickets for live events. And Tick Pick actually invented NFTs, they say, when they were the first site to offer no-fee tickets. It's great being able to buy a ticket to a live event, not have to worry about them tacking on that live fee right before you click checkout and the price goes up. Not with Tick Pick. People accept the bullshit service fees on tickets that sites charge, but Tick Pick's whole business model eliminate them they guarantee the best prices on live ticket events if you don't believe it well if you can find better prices for the same seats on another ticket site tick pick is going to give you 110 percent of the difference in purchase price download the tick pick app today for the easiest way to save money on sports and concert tickets guess what we're going to give you 10 bucks off your first order too all you have to do go to tickpick.com take use promo code take 10 today when you check out use promo code take 10 Get $10 off your first order on live event tickets. Don't forget, download that app. Use promo code TAKE10 for 10 bucks off. Maybe go to an NFL preseason game this week. Get 10 bucks off. Football's back. 
Okay, we now welcome on uh, one of our good friends, recurring guest. I think it's his third time? Third time. Mm-hmm. Third time. It's Damon John. Uh, he is back in studio. In studio live. He's got... Oh, we got we got to oh, fix something. Some, some issues? We'll just run through it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here we go. And boom. That We're going to not cut any of this. I love this. All right. That's how we o- operate. Okay. Probably not the same as the Shark Tank set. No, we cut a lot out there. Really? Yeah. Think about it. The pitches are an hour long. You only see eight minutes. Is there any any time someone and we're gonna get to your audible original, yeah, but of I, I this just started my brain going. Is there any time that someone comes on and you have to cut it because they just bomb so bad? No, the bombing is not a problem. Um, but I think we see about hundred and forty people and you end up only seeing ninety. Okay. But no one's ever like puked on themselves or anything? Yeah, people oh, puked, they have? people have fainted. Um, How does this person puke? You just get they so nervous. Yeah, yeah. The lunch comes up. D- but it's not like a, it, what they're pitching to you isn't like an alcohol-related product. No, no that makes so them scared. Up. No, they're they just alcoholics. So yeah, right. <laughs> before right. they get there. Right. Jesus. Shows that their product works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. So so they cut out, like you said, it's a, you get to see eight minutes of the pitch, but it's an hour-long pitch. That, to me, seems really boring, having to sit through somebody talk about their company for a full hour. Yeah, but more importantly, the the most boring part is generally Lori or Barbara giving great advice before they say they're out, and the advice is ten minutes, and they're not writing a check. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you know, I usually I usually tell them, all right, so what are you gonna do? Yeah. So and they, that's the worst thing when somebody's gonna tell you no and then give you a bunch of advice. Here's uh, why. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So, I'm so be you a need nice to do guy. this. You need to do this. You know, they always say the theory is when you ask for uh, advice, you get money. When you ask for money, you get advice. Yeah. Or when Barbara just starts hitting on them and won't stop for like 25 minutes. Well, that's true. But Barbara also will at least dig into them. Yeah. She'll tell them exactly why she doesn't like them. If she thinks they have gingivitis, she's gonna say it. <laughs> All right. So, what's advice you should give us? I'm not giving you any money. Damn, okay. I fuck, see where you're going I had with that. I knew, you know, I, I, knew, had I knew what once I just said that, yeah, that I, I was in trouble. Ah, fuck. All so right. wait, is that because you don't have any money? Yeah. That's true. Uh, hard times? Yeah. I don't have any money. Do we need to do a round of fundraising? Yes, we can. Series Are you a? one of those rich because guys I'm that got told richer? That, you know, over here, I was told that you did some great stuff giving away money to a lot of people in need. Yeah. Um, I know that I was called to, say, bring awareness to for different sectors that didn't think they can get the money. Yep. Mm-hmm. But I can take money as well. Yeah, that's true. What, do you, what are your thoughts on Jeff Bezos? Should we put him to the guillotine? Why? I don't know. He's too rich. Something just happened? That's just what I see on Twitter. He's too rich. How can you be too rich? I mean, he's too rich, man. He's he's playing just a tip with space. I think he's too rich. I think he's gotten there. <laughs> just a tip? Yeah, he didn't go I don't in. think you could be too rich. Okay. You don't think so? I was looking at Rockefeller's worth the other day, and they said if he was alive today, it would be $400 billion. Woo! That's, that's a lot. Ford it, was $200 billion. Carnegie was around $400 billion. What if, what if one dude just gets all the money? What happens then? Well, then he wins yeah. the game. Monopoly. Monopoly. Game. Yeah. Is, that too, is that too rich? No. Would you eat if some if one person had all the money in the world? How would you try to talk him into giving you some of it? Mm, that's a good question. Or would you just ask kill for him? advice? I'm, I would ask him yeah. for advice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, how could I get some of your money? How can I stop you from being so hated? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's uh, was actually going to be one of my Shark Tank pitches to you is just a, a space shuttle service that only takes billionaires like. Pretty high up in the atmosphere, but not really to space. Yeah. And then all the windows play like videos where it looks like they're in outer space. And then you land them, and they have no idea they didn't go to space. I don't even think I you like have that. to go to space. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, you it takes sh- you up in the air. No, I don't think you have to go up in the air. Oh, the videos just turn on. Yeah, I think it's while you're in the rocket, G force inside of a studio, basically a roller coaster in a studio. Yeah, and the billionaires think that they just went to outer space, and then you let them off, and everybody like pretends to clap for them. Wow, you're so brave. That's I actually like that. Yeah, we run it on CNN and everything. We get them in on it. Well, how are we going to run on CMO? We're just going to buy time. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, like they, paid yeah, commercial. They, yeah. they want the whole effect. Like, you know, Be- Bezos isn't doing it just to be in an astronaut well, I, I suit. Like he that. wants everyone talking about it. But you wouldn't run on CNN. You would um, you'd buy infomercial spots, and you would act like it's real news. So yeah. You wouldn't have to compromise CNN. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah we wouldn't want to do that. Whew. Chris Cuomo. Um, all right, so let's go a little something. <laughs> something a little. Some of that stuff is in my Audible uh, yeah, original right. series, right. Founding uh, FUBU. Yeah, okay. let me let me, let me me introduce this. So it's Founding FUBU. It's yeah. a new Audible original yeah. uh, that goes back to how FUBU got started. So you're going back to the 90s. You're throwing it back. Yeah. You're talking about 
being a self-made guy who who started from nothing to to where you are today. So, can you give us like maybe a a good story from that from that climb because that's really what it's all about, right? Yeah. Like there's got to be a little part of you in doing this project that gets reminiscent, nostalgic oh. of the of the grind because once you get there, it's fun, but it's not as fun as that like everyday all-encompassing creative energy. Oh no, there's so much stuff in there about that. So now be, being that it's an audible original, there is no book. There is no book that exists that purely We're not was book here. Guys. Neither am I. Yes. I'm dyslexic. Right. Now the the founding Fubu story is not about necessarily it's about the good time, but it's also about the bad times. You know, it's about uh, almost getting knocked out by Mike Tyson because I I dressed Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson at a party basically said I'm gonna knock you out and poke me in the chest and we ended up being on a flight one time probably about four years later and he fell asleep next to me he didn't realize it was me and I spent four I spent about five hours trying to find a way to spit in his drink without him <laughs> waking up and knocking my teeth out or uh, the first thing I bought is a you know as somebody who had a little bit of money I, I I thought it was the greatest thing ever I bought the, the Lexus 360 or 380 whatever it is but I the most important part is I bought the 80 disc CD changer. Yeah. And I sat out front of Macy's with the with the trunk open to make sure everybody realized that I had, I had 80 disc at any time I could uh -huh. play. But it was also coming up in the business. You know, I came up on tour. I was a young kid on the tours with um, the first world rap tour. It was, uh, and it was three of my friends. It was me, Hype Williams, and Irv Gotti from Murder, Inc. Hype Williams, the video director, and another friend of mine who they made the movie Belly about. But the... The way that I, I ended up creating FUBU was going on those tours with Big Daddy Kane, LL Cool J, the Fat Boys, and Eric B and Rakim, and Houdini, and um, Run DMC, and seeing that I wanted to make the uniform for these rappers and the kids because nobody else was doing that, and I couldn't rap. Mm -hmm. And I could, I could dance a little. Actually, Houdini had wanted me to dance and go on tour with them, but I was 15 years old. My mother said she wouldn't let me go on a full-fledged tour, so... Some kid I didn't know at the time named Jermaine Dupree took my huh. position out of California, uh, out of Atlanta. So I talk about all those stories and and all turning my house into a factory, going bankrupt almost three times, sleeping next to sewing machines, and all the good stuff and all the bad stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that that like what you just described is there? Are you? Do you find yourself kind of chasing something like that now? Because I think we've, you know, anyone who's had any type of success, they'll tell you that that, like that feeling of I'm on to something new, and it it's all I can think about. Yeah. That there's nothing like it. Yeah. I don't chase that now because I was smart enough to realize that I can't necessarily have all the ideas. Mm -hmm. And if I invest in younger, smarter talent that is obsessed and they know where they're going, that I can hedge my bets by investing in 50 or 20 people like that yeah. that are obsessed. Every day they wake up. They don't care about who else is in their life, whatever the case is. They just work 24 hours a day, and they're going to leave it all in the field. And that's 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 how I live. So, I mean, that's fascinating. What, what age did you find that you were like, I'm... I no longer have the ability to have that grind. Was it an age or was it maybe a net worth where you're like, okay, now I can do, I'm going to transition to something else? No, I was about 35. FUBU was already super hot, but I realized I can grow FUBU. I could try to grow FUBU, you know, but the industry is changing. But why don't I take some money simultaneously and let me, let me know what, what can I really do? What is my skill set? Was it designing clothes? No, putting a big old five and a splashing of FUBU on a bunch of jerseys is not a designer. I was a great marketer, and I had manufacturing, and I had distribution, and I knew celebrities, and I knew the stores. So why don't I just acquire a bunch of other brands that I can put into that pipeline and now divide FUBU up 10, 15 ways. Mm -hmm. And when you go into a store at that time, obviously retail was big. You don't just see I, – I just don't take up real estate in the young men's department. I take up real estate – in the bed in the bedding department in the fragrance department in the electronics department because i find different fubus of their segment whatever that is in different departments and that's how you scale by being able to replicate yourself 10 times 100 times uh -huh. so when yeah. you when you have somebody younger that you're investing in how do you how do you manage to have that same passion about their ideas that you had about your own ideas that must be difficult to do 
to like take someone to believe in somebody else so much that you're willing to throw all of your power and all of your energy into something they have in their head. I generally don't throw all of it in. That's why, because I need to see that they are great executors. All of us have ideas. So if you ever hear me talk about FUBU, I don't say FUBU was the greatest product. I talk about what I did to make it appealing to people. And when you see young talent, like a lot of the people who are listening to us and listen to you all the time, they know their market or they're trying to find a way to convey to their market uh, what they have that's of value. And if you see that they're obsessed with who they're talking about and they know their customer and they're like, this is who my guy or who my girl is, you gotta just bet on that person. You gotta bet that they're gonna win, you know? And even when they fail, they don't get discouraged. They don't go, uh, I thought I had a good idea. They go, no, 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 I didn't figure it out yet, but I'm telling you, I'm mm-hmm. telling you this is going to work. So uh, the times that you found yourself like on the ropes, bankrupt or, you know, close to it, what like, th- I guess, let me actually phrase it this way. A lot of successful people, they get to a point of success and they kind of forget the luck that they had along the way. Mm-hmm. Do you, how much luck did you have? Like, cause I know like my, myself personally, like there's a ton of luck, like yeah. right place, right time kind of stuff that you can't replicate. I had a ton of luck. I, I, I believe there's a mixture of you, you were prepared for it because if you felt like you had a ton of luck, you also had a bunch of doors slammed in your face and you realized that that was just not a journey that you were willing to go down or re- or they weren't ready for you or you didn't present it to them the right way. Or you may have been too early or you may have been too late. Um, but absolutely, there it, it is all about luck. Yeah, it, it's about luck, but preparation at the same time. Yeah, because I always I always find when you talk to successful people, there are certain types of people who have success, and then they think that in retrospect they had all the answers. And it's like no one has all the answers. No, There's a right. lot of times where anyone who had any type of success, they had a lucky break, they had something go their way when it could have gone another way, and that writes your history. If everybody had just all the answers, then Michael Jackson and Prince were still looking for hit songs by the time when they were dying. Or Cuban, you know, he hit a great big oil well, but, you know, recently he doesn't have a large company you may know of. Right. Or, or the lotto winners are bankrupt three years after uh, winning the lotto, and 65% of athletes are bankrupt three years after uh, leaving the league. I had nothing to do with, uh, you know, how skilled they were. You mm-hmm. weren't able to be prepared for the next thing coming down the pipe. So yeah. who was who was the biggest rival of FUBU when it was still in that, you know, very much upward trajectory, kind of new startup type environment where things were, you were, you were just starting to like touch a nerve uh, in, in the culture in America. Was there a rival that you had to look at and say, I'm going to beat this guy? No, not really, because we had everybody was rival and nobody was because we were the first to make like sports jerseys for fashion. So was Nike a rival? Yeah, but Nike was Nike. Mm-hmm. We would we would we were kind of chiseling away at a little bit of their piece. I mean, we did six billion dollars over several years. Nike does thirty billion dollars a year. So, you know, so um, but as we got up, some of my some of my friends became some of my rivals, Sean John and and uh, rock aware and they became some of my rivals chipping away with, at me and and that's the cycle generally to fashion a hot fashion brand lasts about five to seven years there's the unicorns like nike and louis vuitton but yeah. you'll notice whether it's benetton or levi's when i came in the market levi's was doing 18 billion i think they're doing three billion now yeah jinkos ate their lunch exactly yeah. are we are we bringing jinkos back you, you're I'm the not. person i should ask oh i'm what, not what can we do to bring jinkos back in america right now i have no idea <laughs> What? I haven't even rem- I haven't even thought of Jinko. And, Did, have uh, you ever put on a pair of Jinkos? Those are the ones with the big bell bottom like that. The giant legs, the ones that like you could fit two Russian men inside, approximately. Why would they be Russian? Approximately. Why Just, would they be they Russian? To, I, they are well known for splitting a pair of jeans. It's a cultural <laughs> thing. <laughs> but, but, but okay, so you tell me if it's not Jinkos, what's the next what's the next fashion trend in America right now? I uh, I have no idea. Hmm. So uh, something Gap Kanye line? I have no, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Is there what? anything that like in particular that you're you're invested in that you think might start doing well? Well, fashion wise, uh, clothing or I mean, I, I, my Bomba socks guys are doing amazing. Ooh, okay, yeah. those are good socks. Um, great socks. The so coming up in the '90s with with Fubu, if you had to do it again today. You're, you know, 20 year old Damon John. Do you think it still works or do you think it's like a totally different landscape and people just don't have 
the attention span or whatever it may oh, be. Oh, this would be I would it would be it would be ten times bigger. Really? Yeah. You remember I didn't the internet didn't even exist. Right. Uh, social media didn't exist. So I had to physically walk up and get into people's face to buy to sell them something. I also, you know, FUBU, FUBU, thank God, has become a brand that, or uh, a saying that's more pop culture, is bigger than the brand. Yeah. Everybody who does whatever it is, that's FUBU. But I think today what I would do is I would have probably have two representatives, uh, a, a guy and a girl in each high school and a guy and a girl in each um, uh, college, and they would probably get, and I would credit them, they would get probably a 1000 or $1,500 worth of FUBU for $500, and they'd be able to not only uh, have the brand themselves, but they would be able to sell it and make money. And I think that that would be another form of FUBU because you would have all these representatives, so they would pick what they want to buy from the line. They'd get it for $500. That would be a wholesale cost, and it would be worth $1,500, so they can sell some of it, pay for what they want, and then make a profit off of it. And I think I'd probably do that in every high school and every college. Hmm. Do you think that that might be where advertising is going to go for a certain extent? Because if you look at, you know, how to sell to kids or how, how to make trends popular in a high school or middle school environment, who do they look up to? Well, they look up to, you know, athletes or musicians, or they might look up to certain business people, depending on like who the individual is and what your market is. But they also look up to like who the two most popular kids in their class are, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you can just make the most popular kid in their class wear your brand, chances are the rest of the school is going to follow suit to a certain extent. I absolutely believe that. You become the thing that you that you see most of the time, and you or you admire most of the time. That's what you want to be. Mm -hmm. So it, do you think that that would be a way that you could tap into those markets? It's just like identify who you think has like the right hustle in the high school or whatever, and, and set them up with some fubu, and they naturally become. You know, they become marketers for your brand. Well, you got to let them apply. You can't. You can't look for them. You got to let them apply and say, "Why are you the hottest person in the school? Why should you have this ability to get a credit line and this ability to sell clothes and make money?" And we'll also highlight all the top people on our site and highlight why you are the next Fubu coming mm -hmm. up. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you get to this in your Audible original, but like, what was the moment that you said to yourself, like, all right, it's it happened. Like, the, everything I set out to do has happened. Well, that that happened early. That happened when I got the 80 CD change. Yeah, yeah, that was all you were good. looking yeah, for. Yeah, that was it, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I topped out right there. Did you retire yeah. for a couple of weeks and just be like, I got to burn through all this time here? Yeah, no, you know, I did retire at one point for about eight months, and I just got so bored. Really? Yeah, what, what age was that? I was around 36. You yeah. were just like, I'm done? And then you... I was like, I, I, I can retire because I was in between, you know, FUBU slowing down and my other brands, Kooji and all the other brands picking up. And I was like, oh, I'm going to take some time off. I think I want to retire. And it was the most boring time I've ever had in my life. Really? Did you like pick up any new activities or hobbies? Or like, well, I, I was fishing I a golf. bunch. I was fishing a bunch. I was traveling a bunch. But, um, but you know, listen, after you work so hard, you can't stop thinking so it's almost like when you have a long vacation you go i can't wait to get back to work yeah so try that vacation for eight months huh you know and you come back to work with a whole bunch of new ideas mm -hmm. but then i realized that you have to be able to, a friend of mine just said, actually texted me this. he said did you ever get to the point where you just wanted to take off and enjoy you know all your hard work your fruit your labor you know your fruits of labor and i said yeah but then you get to a point well why can't i do them both yeah it'll just take a little bit longer but why can't i time going out fishing or traveling the world as well as working as well as doing charitable work at the same time well that's that's like the final boss mode it's like you make your own schedule yeah right and you're there well you know a lot of people think that you, you can make your own schedule pretty hard i so, have a five-year-old yeah five -year -old oh yeah yeah, no yeah, that, yeah that doesn't yeah, yeah <laughs> that doesn't jive I mean? with it yeah yeah, yeah uh, no i agree there but like, and i got you, a wife but you you can you don't have to if you're like, I don't want to go into the office today, you don't have to. Uh, true. Yeah, that's pretty nice. 100%. How yeah. often do you just like open up your uh, mobile banking account and just look at your balance and then be like, cool, and put it away? <laughs> Never. Never. <laughs> Never do that. I would do that all the time. You would? I Probably. You start stressing. No. I, do if you're you? an A-type personality, you're going to say, why is it so small, no matter how small it is, no, no matter how big it is. problems. Right? Um, you're going to say, well, should I be trying to make more? Uh-huh. Or... How do I make this work for me instead of me working for it? I mean, that's a good question. How should how should my money be working harder for me right now? Because I feel like my money is like Hank. It's just 
on vacation constantly. Mm. It is. Thanks right there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks right there. Yeah. Well, you know, you should inv invest and in, get it. Listen, I got a really, I got a bunch of really great billionaires that are working for me. You know, I got Steve Jobs working for me. I got Elon Musk working for me. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything. Stonks. About stocks, yeah. baby. Are stonks, yeah. are stonks going up or are we doing Dogecoin? Those are yeah, the only two I, options. <laughs> those are the only two. Uh, real estate. Um, they're not making more land. They're not making more land. Well, they are. That's Earth what everyone two. loves to do. Yeah. You, know, the, uh, you check that Earth 2 yet? No. Where's that? Well, Earth 2 is, is so if you guys like, um, uh, you know, all this crypto stuff, Earth 2 is, I know everybody's going to start looking at Earth 2. You can start buying tiles on Earth 2. We got yeah, some, some, like, some, some, some of the video guys here got some, that got some like Earth 2. Yeah. Got some Earth 2? So what do you mean? That, that's an <laughs> NFT of a fake Earth? It's not an, well, is it an NFT of Earth? No, no it's, it's not an NFT of Earth. It makes no sense. They're just selling Earth. But, yeah, I, so but I'm in it, very interested well, now. It's like you're buying Google Maps. Like, you know when you just Google Map and yeah. randomly go somewhere? Yeah. Like, you can then buy that. Yeah, but I listen, if that. you buy yeah. Beverly Hills, you know? But, but on Earth, too? What do you make of the whole NFT Ooh. crypto? Like, I think, obviously, Bitcoin is real. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, enough people believe in it, it becomes real, right? But a lot of these things that are happening, like, everyone just trying to get rich quick... It feels like it's not a coincidence it happened after the pandemic. People are trying to find shortcuts, and people are going to lose their money. A lot of people are going to lose their money. You know, Buffett says it best. You know, the market takes away from the impatient and gives to the patient. The, the, the biggest problem with trading anything is now we have too much access, right? So we have our TD Ameritrades or whatever, Robin Hoods. And we Fuck have Robin our, Hood. We, we have our crypto yep. availability. If you buy something on one of those, the real way you're going to make money is to hold it for 20 years if it's of value. But if you buy it, you naturally look at your account mm -hmm. and you go back and go, oh, I'm Gordon Gecko. I just made $200. You're let, right. me, let me do a let me trade. Sell it. Yeah. And you keep trading and keep trading and keep trading. And so you make incremental money and sometimes you lose it when the market goes down. And that's the biggest part. It takes away your discipline. You have to have discipline. Uh, to see these things mature, just like in real estate. Now, of course, if you're playing the flip it game in real estate, that's a whole different strategy. But long holds and 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 you know things like that. That's where you make the real money. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot recently that uh, that buying real estate or buying buying homes is not really the way to go in certain circumstances. Especially like obviously, if we're living in Manhattan, you have to plan on being here for ten years if you want to make it worthwhile to purchase a sure. home, yeah. as opposed to renting. But I've been hearing that that rental markets across the country are going to continue to go up for the next you know five ten years. Is that what you've heard? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but if you buy you know um, buy it sharply, yeah, because unfortunately the separation of wealth is the gap is getting bigger, mm -hmm. right? And when people don't have well, you know, a lot of intelligence where it comes to you know, digitally and things of that nature, they're not going to make as much money. They're going to need to rent, you know, um, and uh, that's what happened. But also you got the Airbnb markets coming out that are, that are really doing well because people no longer have to be stuck in an office all day or they may want to work outside of the office. So yeah. rental is doing really well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big real estate guy, though, so. Um, okay, so let's do our – do you have ideas that you want to throw? I got a couple. Of, yeah, right, I, got a I have couple. one. So you go ahead. Okay, uh, a store – that sells shirts that have super complicated patterns. Like I'm talking the craziest designs that you can find on like a dress shirt, mm -hmm. you know, button up shirts, party shirts kind of. But um, like think about a very complicated shirt that you've seen recently and then triple how complicated the design is. And it's called Dan Flashes. Why is it called Dan Flashes? It's just a cool name. Right. Daniel Ricardo. What's right? No, is that not Dan. What? No, it's called Dan Flashes. Dan Flashes. It's is called Dan Flashes. So is it, Total it, coincidence. Total coincidence. Yeah. Is the shirt sewn very complicated or just designed? The patterns are the most complicated thing that you've ever seen. They have one shirt that costs three thousand dollars. Yeah. So average price point on the shirt is fifteen hundred. Let's say. So just basically, you make you make the most complicated designs possible, and people pay more money for and, them. And why are they paying more money? Because the, the designs are so complicated. It's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. But how are you going to market it? Um, we get should like an F1 no, driver or something. I'm thinking yeah. that we should get like we should get somebody that has a Netflix show mm -hmm. um, to do a sketch comedy routine about it. Are you going to make them a partner? Viral. Are you going to make them a partner in the business, or how how, how much money are you going to use to start this thing up? I would do it without their knowledge of it, and I would yeah. and then I would try to get publicity about doing it by recording it on a podcast with one of the sharks. 
hypothetically. But how is a person going to promote it without their knowledge? Are they wearing Because it? the show's already out. Mm -hmm. It's already been put so out. So you're going to just CG maybe the shirt on, on the person? I know. I'm just stealing their idea that they came up with in a super popular Netflix show. Okay. That they don't have trademarked, and I'm trying oh, so to that's make out a, already now. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to make it's, a it's hypothetical shirt into a reality. Oh, okay. Can I do that? Can, can you steal that idea? Yeah, if they don't you have just, a trademark, you can steal anything you want. Okay, that's what I want to do. Why don't we steal ideas from China? Like they steal all of our patents. Can yeah, we do the back. Like you know, we. I'm sure we do. We should do. They're that. just better at it. We should start doing that. Mm -hmm. We should start you, stealing you should all. Start of doing that? My idea was simply that I just wish there was an app. To tell you where the uh, ice cream truck was. Pretty simple. That's good. Yeah. Like, you just always, like, I'd like to, you know, yeah. know where the ice cream truck what is. What if you're in, uh, like, Oklahoma or something like that? There's got to be a couple of... You're saying there's not ice cream trucks? No, there, I'm just Damon? saying they're 300 miles away. Yeah. I, well, I would like to at least know if I want to yeah. go where well, it you, is. Why don't you stop by the ice cream store instead? Because no, the, the no, truck no, comes no. to you. The truck is also better. Yeah. yeah. So you can Uber the truck. No, you go to the Ooh. truck still. Well, yeah, but what so about? So it's kind of we're we're it's a deconstructed ice cream truck. I kind of I understand what you're saying. It's always nice to know where the truck is, also for safety reasons, so you don't get hit by one. But if you had like an Uber for ice cream truck, where you enough people in a certain yeah, location yeah. hit the button, uh -huh. the drivers got it in their hands and they know where their customers are. I'm so like I love ice cream so much. I just would go to the truck instead of having the truck come to me. But I, we can do that idea too. D is Surge. that all the time so you yeah. know that you won't get hit by it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah Every time running. I cross the street, yeah. I check. And the one, you know what? Because the one time you don't check, get he doesn't have it. his chime going uh -huh. and he runs over your head. How about an app? If you think that you were someplace and you think you've said the stupidest shit ever, uh -huh. mm -hmm. that you go to an app where there's freelancers that can tell you shit that's even more stupid than what you thought you oh, said. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I or like that. how much... Okay, so, so you, you passing on that idea, you're saying a freelancer would be like, hey, Damon, that was stupid for you to fucking pass on that. Well, he's at, you're actually talking about Twitter. The app where you people realize just tell you how money dumb you are. Guys can make. <laughs> yeah, we just made <laughs> a freelancer of money. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. How about this one? Um, you build Titanic 2. The exact can they same. Do that? No, but the exact same dimensions uh -huh. as the original were, one. Was there someone who was going to do it's, that? It's a great idea, and I've been pushing okay. for this for a while. I think I pitched it maybe. I might have pitched it to Barbara. That's right. And yeah. she was very interested, by the way. she's it, We're in negotiations, but I want to give you exclusive rights to oh, it. Oh, lucky me. Yeah, so it's yeah. Titanic 2, same, same dimensions, same route, and it says... On the <laughs> same route? Yep, yeah. same route. Well, there's no icebergs anymore. Yeah, That's it, good point. It yeah. says well, on, there's, there's less icebergs. It still says on the bottom... Even God could not sink this ship, and this yeah. is underlined three times, and there's not enough lifeboats. I guarantee people would buy tickets. I would. But that's the important part. There's not enough lifeboats. It has to be exactly well, yeah. the same. Yeah. Like, we have not so is, learned shit is, about maritime safety in over 100 years. Let's run it back. But is the boat with different engines or the same exact same, boat? Everything. Same. Yeah, coal. Everything you know what is weird, it's weird enough where people will actually yeah do they it. would they, they would take they would they would say I'm gonna take a trip back in history yes mm -hmm. same exact way yep and uh, there's not the enough event. light bulbs yeah. that's the important yeah. part right because they yeah the danger it makes honestly I want to the only reason I want to invent this is so I can buy the ticket to get on I think it'd be the best roller coaster ever why don't you just buy a ticket to a regular little boat. and just go not now the same. it's not, not the, the same not the same not the Titanic same. why yeah the history. Titanic too did you hear him. Yeah. Yeah, I heard him. And I don't think you did. The nostalgia. History, yeah. You the just nostalgia said another fact. boat. Clearly, yeah. you're not listening. This is going to be another big. boat anyway. Yeah, this yeah. Titanic 2 is another nah, boat. Same boat. <laughs> it's not the same Titanic. No, we go get the boat from the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, and oh. melt it. And go get it. And then. I didn't think of that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think of getting the boat from the. The same thing that they've been trying to erect for the last uh, 40, 50 years. That's yeah. the yep. boat. You going to get it now? Yep. Going to get it. Next one I have is. Oh, it's uh, we haven't had a good talking dog movie in a while. That was hot back in the '90s. Um, so it's we had talking dog movies recently. Have we? Yeah. Oh, I guess maybe I, which I'm one? Just not seen him. Clifford know, is coming yeah. back out, but does he talk? I don't think he yeah, talks. I don't think he talks. He's a big ass dog. Okay. Well, instead of that, how about Zig when everyone else is zagging, and we'll do Air Bud, but it's with one human in a dog basketball league, and the humans Michael Jordan and the dogs are Looney Tunes. Thoughts? I have absolutely no thoughts for that. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. that's fine. Right, that's you fine. Can just say no thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
let's see, uh, ice golf. How long does it take you to, to come up with these? Like less time than it does for me to say them out loud. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, ice golf is the barber one, right? Which one? What did you just say? Ice, ice golf. golf. Well, ice let me ice ask them. If I like one of them, yeah. You want to hit that bench for me real quick, or no? Yeah. Well, you don't have any weights on it. That's fine. Even better. No. How okay. much? You want me to do reps? What no. if we made a gym of all fake weights that just for Instagram? I like that. Okay. I actually like yeah. that one. Right. Make mm -hmm. everyone look like they're fucking jacked. I like that one. Okay. Yeah. So put that one down. But wouldn't wouldn't what? the people who look like they're really doing work, wouldn't they already be worked out because they were at real gyms? But you don't have to no, look no, no, no. strong. You just yeah. have to be yeah. lifting the fake weights. Right. The hollow weights. But wouldn't right. you be looking? Wouldn't you? It, if you look like you're weak and you're lifting them it doesn't give you any credit so wouldn't you kind of no but you see? look like you're strong like you you can't look weak lifting do they have to wear sweatshirts 700 you'll pounds no That's you'll notice the muscles are not bulging or no, whatever i think you'd be looking at the 700 pounds I, th I think you could wear long sleeve shirts and you know sweatpants ponchos everybody wears ponchos to. in this gym yeah yeah exactly yeah, Just cover yourself poncho up. only yeah. yeah um and then uh the other one that we had is actually a, a great idea i think it's an app that tells you what the percentage of uh, male to female ratio is at a bar when you're out on the town mm. with your buddies, mm -hmm. and uh, you just like hit the hit the thing. It tells you what kind of the scene it is there. They what like have pictures that, that they upload. Well, it depends. Prestige, is this for heterosexuals or, is for heterosexuals or is this for whoever? Anyone can use it. So you just what, want well, to. If the you can't, if you're in a bar that you can't tell the difference between the males and females, then you're in a very specific type of bar where you don't want to tell that difference. That's true. You could also app? market it like that, too. You know, just, like, drop a pin in. What was the name? We had a terrible name for it. I, it was an awful name. I think it was, like, Prestige. Or, yeah, it was, no, it was, like, uh... Fuck. Worldwide. You forgot yeah, Worldwide. Yeah, Prestige yeah. Worldwide. But we could change the name. I think it's just, just Ratio mm -hmm. would be a good name for it. Yeah. Yeah, Ratio works. Sausage Party. Ratio works, but... Why wouldn't you be able to tell the difference between the males and females? What do you mean? Or women and men in the bar? You, you no, would before be, you general, go. No, oh, before, before you go. go. Yeah. When you're outside. Yeah. yeah. No, or, or let's just say, like, we're right here. We're outside the part of my take studio, and we're thinking about going, I don't know, somewhere like Lower East Side. How about someone coming into the... No, someone's walking on in the hallway right now, and they're thinking about coming in the part of my take studio, and they're like, oh, it's just fucking six dudes. Mm-hmm. No thanks. So you can check before you even decide to get into a cab and go there. Yeah. You know, not a bad idea, but how are you going to know? Where are you going to get a reading on who's there? Is that a voluntary reading? Yeah, other users are there. That's it's Big Brother. It's a, big a, a involved. community. NSA. We need the NSA to help we us. We could either do NSA work or we could have the community of users uh, that are mm -hmm. there. And you they opt just, in. Yeah, and then you just put like 60%, 40%. Have you, yeah, have you thought about creating an app where you just opt in and then we can just steal everything from the people? Because no. no one reads the opt-in, right? That is true. Right. So you just, in the opt-in, it says, we can steal everything from you. Mm -hmm. Something to think about right you guys, there. Yeah, you guys think about a lot of uh -huh. counterfeiting, stealing from people. Yeah, shortcuts. Yeah. yeah. You're big on shortcuts. Yeah, you're big on shortcuts. Yeah. Uh, yeah so you wanted to steal something from Netflix people. You uh -huh. wanted to steal something yeah. from China. From everyone as well. You want to steal something now from everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about a service where people who are very wealthy contact you just to do their dirty work on the side, like henchmen for hire? Yeah. I feel like henchmen should, like, mm -hmm. that's us. Yeah. Essentially. Contract killers. Yeah. Hank yeah. just gave us. All right, a, well, we've got a lot Hank to do. Hank gave us you got, a yeah, lot. You got a lot to do. How about, lot. How, about, how about an app where immediately when you say this, some attorney advises you on how many years you will get in jail for each one of these Apps. concepts. Yeah, I ideas. like that. Yeah, yeah. An yeah app, you, three to yeah. five, this idea is seven to ten, uh -huh. this idea is the chair. Uh -huh. I, I actually think that so far our two best ideas are the, the hollow weights, mm -hmm. Titanic 2. Mm -hmm. I like the hollow weights. Yep. I think Titanic 2 is a horrible idea. Eh, mm. I think mm. people would buy it. It's not for everybody. You'll, you'll be wrong on that one, yeah. Mr. I, I, rich I guy. Yeah, I, honestly, yeah, if, I, if I was extremely wealthy, I probably would not want to get onto a ship that was likely going to kill me yeah. either. But no, you'd probably get a lifeboat. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah, that's yep. true. Well, women and children first. Yeah. I you'd be like one both. of those rich guys like I'm more important Who would put that? their women and children on that boat knowing that well, it's, it's going... Part of real men? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know that they get it. Yeah. Not cowards <laughs> like you. Uh, <laughs> All right, so your Audible uh, book is out, right? <laughs> it, it is Audible original, yeah. No, yep. bo no book yeah, don't, exists. Don't use no the B word. It's no, for no. guys like us. No yep. book exists. Yep. So um, go check it out.
Yeah. And uh, always great to have you in studio. I, I have fun with you guys all the time. It is fascinating. I, I go home and it just haunts me. <laughs> think for about it. Yeah. About, Next time you opt <laughs> about twenty four hours, yeah. you're gonna think like. Yeah. It's kind of like ripping the scab. Well, yeah. You know, you just look, keep looking at that. <laughs> that, that it's probably stuff. also life affirming to be like, I'm I'm doing okay if these fucking idiots are <laughs> you know, successful. So. It's good seeing you guys. Yeah. Man. All right. Good seeing you, man. Right. You got it. That interview was brought to you by our great friends over at Mattress Firm. Unjunk that sleep, people. Unjunk the sleep. America has a problem. Everyone's exhausted and out of it because they're not sleeping in a bed that's right for them. The sleep they are getting sucks. This problem has a name. It's called junk sleep. If you stay up too late, if you work in bed before going to sleep, if you're watching TV in bed before you go to sleep, if you use your phone, tablet in bed when trying to go to sleep, if you're not taking the time to unwind from the day and prepare for bed, you are getting junk sleep. That can all be solved by talking to a mattress firm sleep expert. The sleep experts at Mattress Firm are going to match you with the best mattresses and sleep products out there based on your specific sleep preferences so you can get your best sleep possible. We're excited to be partnering with them for this year's Grit Week. We're helping to spread the word on how to unjunk that sleep. Unjunk your sleep. Go to mattressfirm.com or visit a mattress firm store today and speak with a sleep expert. Okay, we're going to wrap up. We've got Mount Rushmore. Uh, I guess the question is how how are we doing as a group? I'm doing great. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, let's do a quick poll around the room. Billy, how are you doing? Billy, I'm I'm actually a little heated. Oh, oh. F- do tell. I think Jake stole my hot seat. Okay. All right. Your so fire seat. Your fire seat. Billy, I took a screenshot. Six sixteen p.m. The last edit I made on this note. Oh wow! Oh, wow, okay, Jake. So well, that's when you hey. open. That's when you open the notes. Jake with receipts. Yep. He that's just pulled open, the receipts open a on note. you. He just pulled the receipt mm-hmm. on. You. Nope. Just made an edit and went to eight oh seven. Oh. Yeah. All right. So Jake, how are you doing? I'm great. PFT, <laughs> you're doing well. I'm yeah, really good. I am as well. Uh, Bubba, how are you doing? Great. Okay. And then Hank. I'm good. I mean, I've okay. been I've been cool. better. <laughs> no. You, yeah. 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 You good? Whatever. Good. Yeah. Are you Are you good? I re- all I'll say is I'm, I've moved on. Positive vibes only. Okay. Uh, Will you be participating? It's up to you. You guys are my boss. Whatever you <laughs> say goes. I'm a man of my word, like I said. Uh, Hank, so it's up to you. Nothing, Whatever you guys want me to do, I'll do. Nothing would make me happier than if you participate in this Mount Rushmore. Cool. I actually, the only thing that will make me happier is if Hank is happy. So whatever makes you happy, you should do. What it makes me happy is making my boss happy. So whatever you <laughs> okay, guys want we're the happy do, off. I like this. And I just want to say, like lastly, whether or not I Liam made my picks or not, you guys throwing them out Rushmore is bullshit, in my opinion. But that's my opinion, and I moved on from it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Agreed so are you, you're happy now. If if you're happy, then I'm happy. I'm very, but well, I'm only happy when you're happy. No, but Big Cat, we already uh, said uh, that. The only thing that makes me really happy good, is so making you happy. I think, so I think if you're telling me that he's not making me happy, I'm just happy. But I think he is happy because. We said that we were happy, but exactly. he's got to make me happy to be happy. But but we, I'm not. We I'm, not said, I'm happy independent. We of Hank. said we were happy before Hank said that. Waiting for us to be happy makes him happy. I'd like to see a smile from Hank for him to make me happy. There it is. Wow, huge! That was a huge smile. All right, now I am happy because of you, Hank, which means you're happy because I'm happy. Yep. Yeah. All right. This sounds great. All right, we're doing the Mount Rushmore of athlete nicknames, and we didn't plan this, but. It is. It should be in honor of uh, Jonathan Kaminga, who is got drafted by the Warriors and is now being called the Cum Bucket. Okay. By Warriors fans. All right. So that's something. That's I like that. Ni- that's I, what the nicknames that probably won't stick. I well, is that a it pun? probably would stick. Uh, yeah. But I think that maybe we should do a separate column for Chris Berman nicknames. Oh, uh, what do you mean? Are any of your nicknames that you're going to choose Chris Berman nicknames? N- because no. We're doing athlete nicknames, so you you did a different task. No, no, I'm saying like oh. nicknames that Chris Berman has given. To I have athletes. not prepared that. You have. No, I'm just saying. I was saying that we should not be taking like, uh, uh, like John Kitten Caboodle, Scott Supercalifragilistic Expialidocious. Yeah, no, no, it should be athlete nicknames that everyone knows. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Numbers. Numbers. Hank, why don't you start with your number? One. I'll go zero. <laughs> I'll go double zero. Okay. <laughs> Billy, Jake. <laughs> what do you want? Sixty nine? No. You no. Four. Be. Four. Four. 
Okay. okay. Are you guys throwing the order? No. No. <laughs> I always it's definitely pick not zero. obvious. Two. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Hank, your decision on the order. <laughs> now that made me happy, Hank. Did it not make you happy? Didn't tickle you a little bit? If you're happy, then I'm happy. No, <laughs> Even right. if you guys tried throwing it, it failed. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So it makes it great. Yeah. Uh what do you what do you think? I don't you you it's, it's your, your call. call. Alright, we'll go one, two, three, four. So me, Jilly, big Myself cat, and then PFT, okay. This is a tough one. This is going to be there. There are so many good nicknames. We're going to leave a lot out for sure. Now, hey, Hank, is this your pick or is this you and Bubba combined? Just curious. What do you guys want me to do? Uh, I, I'd be why don't you surprise us? I want you to do whatever you want to do, Hank. Yeah. Okay. Um, first pick is Big Poppy. Got it. Mm. Boston legend. It's champion. A, you when you reverse say, the curse, and I, it's just a great. I love it when you call me Big Papa. It's like the, uh, yeah. you know, that's a song independent of Big Poppy. Mm -hmm. Just a great name. Barstool Employee. Barstool Employee. Barstool Employee, our coworker. Go uh, listen to Call Me, what is it? Call Me Poppy? Yeah, Call Me Poppy. Yeah. I think that's also, like, the reason why that's also such a great nickname is that you can even shorten it and it still works. If you say Poppy, you, yeah. people know who you're talking about. Right. Uh, and okay. he, like, you know, he is, he's a legend. Yeah. He, fits, he fits the name. All right. We are going to go with, may he rest in peace, the Black Mamba. Ooh, okay. What are you fucking ESPN? He gave it to himself after. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna stick with the Lakers. I'm actually surprised this lasted all the way to me. I think it's probably the greatest nickname of all time because it just become his has become his name. It is Magic Johnson. There is no one better than Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. Irvin Johnson becoming Magic. I mean, it's just synonymous, everything about him. It feels weird when Mike Wilbon says, me and my friend Irvin. It's like, mm -hmm. dude, that's magic. He's magic. Yep. There, there are a couple nicknames that uh, that just have become what you call the person. I'd say Magic Johnson is one of them. Another one would be Dr. J. Dr. So J. Dr. Good Dr. One. J. Yes. Straight up. Dr. J. No idea how he got the nickname, but it fits. It works. Uh, and then my second pick is going to be the big unit. Ooh, Randy Johnson. Good one. Good Big one. Unit. Was he six foot ten, six eleven? Yep. Yep. And nothing. That's all it's talking about is yep. height. Killed a bird. Um. All right. I. This one is another synonymous name. It's an all time nickname, and it is a nickname. It's Tiger Woods. He's Eldrick Woods. Mm -hmm. His nickname is Tiger. It was given to him when he was a kid. There's nothing better. Like when he's in his red red shirt on a Sunday hunting down his prey. Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods. Italian or. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, no, no. is he Italian or pervert? I think just just pervert. <laughs> okay, per, just pervert. Yeah. All right, this is a fun new game. <laughs> All right, uh, Chili, you're up. We're gonna go with Hideki Matsui, Godzilla. Okay, okay. good one. Okay. Also, like a porn king. Yes. How many? Yes. How much porn did he have? Like forty thousand. No, wait, DVDs? You, I think. Are you thinking about Matsui or, or Rabu? That guy. What was? No, you're. Th yeah, Matsui. I think Matsui had it. Yeah, Matsui. Yeah. Rabu was also a Yankee legend. Crazy who I think has unfortunately passed away. I'm uh, going to go with Pervert, by the way, for Matsui. Okay, Hideki Matsui. <laughs> 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 well, we don't know if he's ever been to Italy. All right, good pick. Godzilla. Hank. I'm going to keep it within the family, the Barcel family. Primetime. Yeah, mm. I had it on my list. Yeah, great pick. Actually, don't you mean Coach? Coach Prime. Sorry, no, Coach well, Prime. Yeah. Coach Prime. <laughs> Uh, okay. And then I will go with Stone Cold. Ooh, okay. Stone I like Cold, that. Steve Austin. I like that. I'm actually, I have not consulted Jake for this pick, but I'm going to go with The Juice. Okay. OJ Simpson. Simpson. Okay. Nice. Jalen Brown. Oh. Nice. Nice. OJ Simpson. I like it. All right. Um, this is my per one of my personal favorite nicknames of all time, uh, just because it gives a uh, little love to anyone who's a little bit on the chunkier side. That would be the round mound of rebound, yep. Charles Barkley. I had that on my list. Round too. mound of rebound, such a great fucking nickname. Way better nickname than Cirque Charles. Yes. Round mound yes. of rebound should we should normalize that yes. when talking about yes. Charles Barkley. Okay. Uh, all right, number three, I'm gonna go with the refrigerator. Mm, William, I had it on my William, list. William, the refrigerator, Perry, the fridge. Yep. There were all those great posters back in the day of him just standing next to a refrigerator. Yep. To be like, look, I'm as big as this thing. Yep. Uh, a classic nickname. And then number four, 
You can so say you can so say, many good ones. Right. You can say this is a it's a, a pander pick, but I I honestly think Blake the boat Bortles. Okay, that is a pander pick. The, that's the definition the of a pander pick. The best of all time. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. Yeah, that is the definition of a pander pick. At least you prefaced it. Actually, yeah. you know what? The great pick. Yeah. Pause of vibes. Yeah. Good yeah. pick. Thanks, yes. yes. You're the, you're the man. Um all right, my last one. I'm on going to go <laughs> I'm going to go with uh I'm going to go with sweetness. Walter Payton. That's just a great nickname. Another one where it's like there's only one sweetness and uh sweetness. Okay. There's so many good ones that left off. We should go 60. You want to go another round? I'll go 60. You want to go another round? Everyone down for another round. Let's Wait, do does that mess up the amount of picks, though? No, yeah. What, if we do one uh, another round, Hank will go three times in a row, then Jilly, then me, then PFT last. And I go two? No, yeah. you go one. Because that's only one extra. I've only oh, so just one extra. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One, or right. you want to go a whole other round? If this were last week, I'd be like, "This is crazy," because you know Mount Rushmore is only four people. But I'm positive vibes. Let's do it. Okay, whatever let's go want, a full other round. Do. Yeah, let's whatever go you want to do. Other big round. Here yeah, we go. Yeah. Let's go. All right. So we're going to all the way, Hank, all the way back around, all the way back around. All right. We are going to go with another Laker, Shaq. Shaq. Okay. Wait, which nickname are you going to take? Shaq. Shaq. Shaquille O'Neal is his name. Shaq. Yeah. I, I like to say Shaq O'Neal, though. That makes people very upset. The thought crossed my mind uh, to just do four variations of Shaq's nickname. Like the Big Aristotle. He, the, yeah, uh, the Big Shaq Cactus. Diesel, the Big Cactus. The Shaq The Big Shamrock. Superman. Yeah. Superman. Uh, Little Weenie. But I did not do that. So how many do I have right now? You have two. Okay. Uh, white Chocolate. Mm, okay. Yeah. And The Truth. Okay, Paul Pierce, good nickname. Yeah, very good. All right, uh, you guys have a uh, another pick. We're doing one extra round, so we're gonna end with Hank. You have two at the end. I'm I'm I've made five picks already. No, you've made four. No, I've made five. Oh yeah, okay. So you're gonna do one at the end. You're right. Sorry, we got lost in the snake again. Yep. Yep. Johnny Football. Good fucking. Okay, that's great, on my list. Great good nickname. pick. I don't this know. This is a great draft. Mm -hmm. Having a football nickname is kind of lame. Um. Okay. Especially when I'm playing. I'll go too. with. I'll oh, go, shit. That, actually, my personal. My I bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with my personal favorite nickname that uh, he refuses to take, although I think he's taking it now, the Slim Reaper, mm -hmm. Kevin Durant. That's just a fucking great fucking nickname. Great the fact nickname. that he tried to force the servant on us when he has the Slim Reaper. And the Durantula. On, and the Durantula. This is where a week ago I'd be like, that's not a real nickname if he doesn't it, acknowledge it. But he has you know what, Big Cat? It. That's a good pick. No, he has acknowledged it. But he, he said he's going to start going as a Slim Reaper. Got it. He said it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Good pick. Good pick. Okay, so okay, good. I'm happy yeah. you're happy, Hank. Thanks. All right, so just You to almost clarify, made me not happy there. I get no, it. I know. Which I, would make you not happy. Right, that's the last thing I want to do. Just so you know. Like, if we had a scale here, you just dipped me all the way to two on the happiness No, but scale. I said if it was... And that would have made you very unhappy, which would have then in turn made me even more unhappy. Right. So and we, so we avoided all want. of that. Yeah, are, okay. we all, are we all happy before we proceed? Yes. Checking in. Yes. 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 Okay. If cat's yes, then I'm yes. Good. Uh, so I have two? Two. Okay. In that case, I'm going to go with... Um, I'll go with the big hurt. Yeah, Frank I had Thomas. It. I had it. I the had big it. Hurt, great I had nickname. It. Plus, I had it. plus, he's out there fucking everybody's wife at the gym in those mm -hmm. commercials. Yep, that's pretty cool. Good one. And what, then, can you explain these commercials? Because I feel like you've made a few references in the past few days, like, and I've never seen. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's uh, testosterone it. pills. Yeah, it's, a, it's to keep you in great shape, and your wife's not going to be complaining about it either. Yeah, you know. Sex. All right, yeah, I just, I, bonks yeah, I just wanted to like, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to sex stuff. maybe get some clarification. I don't, from I don't the bonk listeners. to Frank Thomas's commercial, but I feel like no sex stuff. When people see Frank Thomas, you're when, addicted to sex stuff. When women see Frank Thomas, they bonk themselves because he's on those pills. Yes. Um, all right, so my last one, I'm gonna go with. This is another big time pander pick. Uh, oh jeez. Okay, fine. I won't pander. No, do it. Do no, it, no, do I don't it. pander. You know just what? do it. Pander. I'm not. I'm not pander. going to pander. I'm not. I will not pander. So instead, I'm gonna go with. Doug Martin, the muscle hamster, Ooh, and that was one. another nickname that he tried. What was to, your pander? He pick? tried to get. I was going to go with uh, Andres Galarraga, big, big cat. cat. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to go a little NASCAR. Uh, maybe the greatest nickname oh, I know of all time. The Intimidator. With, yeah. The Intimidator, Dan, Dale Earnhardt Sr. I mean, what are you going to do when the Intimidator comes for you? Yeah, Richard Petty, the King. That's a pretty good. That's one, pretty too. good. Uh, but King James. No, but he, it's King Petty first. Yeah. Yeah. This it is. This it is really hard, though, in in terms of nicknames. 
Like, I was thinking, like, you know, some guys have nicknames that just their real name, like LeBron is is a, an example, or Michael Jordan, like Air Jordan, King James, yeah. but really LeBron and MJ are way bigger than that. I always like it when people refer to MJ as his airness. Yeah, That's but the the, but you know what I mean? Like, their names are w way supersede their nicknames. Yep. I, I actually think that... Michael Jordan's name is just Jordan. Yeah, he's gotten as close. MJ at, or Jordan. He's gotten as close to uh, to like what Brazilian soccer players do. Yes, just shortening their name to one thing. As, yes. as will ever happen in America. All right, uh, go ahead. We're gonna wrap up with. Well, do you want to do another round? Yes, do it. <laughs> do you want to? I got I got so many nicknames, <laughs> but no, we don't have to. All right, but I have so many nicknames. To wrap up with Broadway Joe Namath. Oh, mm. good one. Okay. Hank, uh, this will be the end. And then we'll do honorable mentions, which have a lot of great nicknames as well. I will end with the answer. Great nickname. Yep. I AI. had it on my list. You said that every for every person. But you I have a very long list. Uh, but you list. know what? Yeah, you're right. That's my bad. I shouldn't have even said that. Okay. All right. Uh, I thought your pander pick, by the way, mm -hmm. which uh, I thought about, but I was like, I can't do it. Playoff Damien. Yep. But that's really just an inside joke here. Uh, all right. Things that got left off. The great one. Wayne Gretzky. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get better than the great one. Babe Ruth. Yeah. Uh, the so would you say Sultan of SWAT or the Great Bambino? I think great, the Great Great Bambino. Bambino. I go Great Bambino. Yeah. The, also the Colossus of Clout. That's the scene where they're all naming him. Yep. And, and yes. Smalls doesn't know who it is. Yes. Uh -huh. This is the best. Uh, how about Fred McGriff, the Crime Dog? Crime Dog's a good one. Awesome one. Uh, Big Ben. Big Ben. Big Ben. Yeah. Yep. El Duque. Uh, he El might Duque. be Italian actually. Juan Hernandez. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, no, he's Italian. Yeah, he's Italian. A <laughs> uh, big sexy, Bartolo Colon. Yes, big sexy. Uh, the Hawk, Andre Dawson. Yeah. Also, big game James, James Shields. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, Meast, Sean Taylor, half man, half beast. Yep. Play the sheriff. Pete. Oh, you know which one that we, that? Oh, the sheriff, Peyton Manning. You know which one that we totally missed that should have been on there? The boss, Jerome oh, Bettis. Yeah. I mean, that's a fucking awesome nickname. What about? Bill and its colors are a bus color. That was the coolest part. Bill Parcells, the big tuna. The big tuna. Or, That's the or, office. Or, whoa. <laughs> wow. What? Did you really? I mean, you guys. Um, I said it. Anyway, I said it. Wow. And it's anyway, anyway. I was going to say a different ah, nickname the, for Bill Parcells, but we're not going to say You were going to say C word, D word. Yeah, no, not yeah. going to say it. Uh, this one actually isn't well known, but I think it's sick. Uh, the Juggernaut, Peyton Hillis. Oh yeah, yeah. That, no one. I I would have said that first, but Beast turns mode, out that yeah. isn't well known. Beast mode, Marshawn Lynch, uh, the Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig. That's a great fucking nickname. The Yankee Clipper, I think, is a great nickname. But this pinstripe Dan, what do you what, what what Liam? What are you laughing about? I think he just, just Jake calling himself. Yeah, out. the best in the yeah. office. Yeah, that's very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, what about Larry Bird, the Hick from French Lick? Great nickname. What about fucking Hakeem the Dream Elijahwan? Damn, great nickname. The uh, big ticket. I didn't want to do. I was thinking about just doing all Boston, but I didn't want to do that. Big country, big country. Bryant Reeves. I was gonna say Kyle Rudolph, but yeah, also Bryant, Bryant Reeves. Reeves as well. Um, you know what? What I think it was uh, Warriors fans that gave Corey Maggette the nickname, Corey Bad Porn Maggette, mm. because they said it, not all scoring is good scoring to watch. Ah, I like that one. Oh, I, I realized today I did not know this until I looked it up. But Jadavion Clowney has a nickname. You know what it is? It's Doo Doo. Doo doo, doo doo, clowny, because he crapped in the pool one time when he was a kid, oh. and everyone called him doo doo after that. I feel like maybe we need to bring that back. That's like Poopy Davenport, Najee Davenport. Remember yeah. where he crapped in his uh, girlfriend's laundry in hamper? the hamper. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if anyone called him Poopy Davenport except. No, actually, people called him. Poopy Didn't Davenport. Deuce McAllister poop in a car one time? That feels a little too on the nose. Yeah, well, I mean, doo doo, clowny taking the Browns to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else? Any others that we can think of? There's another big cat, Tony Santa, mm -hmm. U.S. soccer legend. Yep. The Red Mamba. Oh, dude, the Flying Tomato. That's a great fucking nickname. It is Sean nickname. White. Uh, That's a great nickname. There's a guy, he's an old baseball player. When His name was actually Johnny Dickshot. But he went by, his nickname was Ugly Johnny Dickshot. I like I feel that. like that's adding insult to injury. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Uh, you want to, I, I did look up some Chris Berman nicknames that I did not include, but I just, I looked at them and I laughed. Obviously, Mike, you're in good hands with Allstott. Yep. Is a, a great one. John Kitten Caboodle is my favorite. That's also a good one. Uh, there was Miguel Tejada They Come, Tejada They Fall. <laughs> that's fucking good. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. Uh, there is 
Jake Daylight come and you got a Del Lome. Yup, that might actually be my favorite now that I'm thinking about it. Matt Stump the Shab. Yup. Calvin Benjamin Netanyahu. Yup. 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 That one, very good. Um, all right, I think that was a great Mount Rushmore, guys. Does everyone feel good about this? Do you feel good about it? I feel great about it. I feel it. amazing about it. Are you sure? Are you? Oh, Butterbean as well. Butterbean. Great nickname. Mm -hmm. Iron Mike. Because that, that's the guy. Yeah, Iron Mike Tyson. Shit. Damn. That's a fucking I mean, great boxing nickname. is filled with them. Yeah, it is true. Um, Sugar Muhammad Shane. Muhammad Ali, I think, is just... The GOAT. Yeah, the he's the all greatest time. of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you feel good. Do you? I feel great. I feel great then. Okay. I think we all feel great. We all feel good about this Mount Rushmore. Tom, terrific. Six deep. We went six deep. Wasn't uh, Julian Edelman once, wasn't he uh, Minitron? Oh, no, Flying Squirrel. Flying Squirrel, Squirrel yeah. Oh, we Megatron left, is a great nickname. We left off the Honey Badger. Yep. Fuck. The Honey Badger. Damn it. Danny Ricardo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> honey Badger was a big miss. Shit. Greg Kittle. Yeah. Great nickname. I almost want to Third replace. Leg. Third Leg Greg. Also great nickname. Mm -hmm. Gronk, technically. Has Russell Wilson given himself a nickname? I think he Rusticulous. tried. Yeah, uh, he Rust tried. dangerous. He, the past. He probably. He's, a, yeah. he's got some things trademarked, I'm sure. <laughs> and he tried to sell merch. On Google, it's the professor. The professor. The professor go. Kyle Hendricks. Mad Dog uh, Greg, Greg Maddox, Maddox was also. Yep. The, wasn't, wasn't Maddox also the professor yes, for a yes, little bit? Yes. Also, the professor. Yeah. Yes, the professor. Escalade, another good one. Who's just the kid? Uh, Griffey. Yes. Griffey mm -hmm. Jr. Yeah. Great, great nickname. So many good nicknames. Oh, man. And we left off a lot, so people are going to get mad at us, but what are you going to do? That's just what you got to live with. Mm -hmm. It's okay. part of the game. We could have just done all hockey nicknames and just added an ER. Caner. Or, or an I sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, 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 you have a flow oh, chart. Uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> if your name ends in a vowel, you put an R on it. Yes. If your name ends in a consonant, you just put... Like a Y at the end. Yes, yes. So we should we should do that sometime with uh, the Spit and Chicklets guys. All right, Billy, any recap? Anything that we missed? Um, the study that I talked about earlier was paid for by Impossible Burger, PFD. And, uh, Wait, so they, they, they paid for their own study that fuck, fucked them myself over? Yeah, exactly. Damn. Um, so, oh, by the way, a little follow-up on this: the fastest man currently, the Italian guy, mm -hmm. Lamont. Uh, basically, of all the sprinters to break nine uh, seconds Eight, uh, nine out of the ten have tested positive or been accused of using steroids, except Usain, Usain Bolt. Bolt. Mm. So, hmm. mm. lightning bolt. He's the hmm. greatest of all time. Hmm. Hmm. Lamont, Italian. Oh, bong rips Phelps. Mm hmm. That's a good nickname. People call him that. Jake Is that the it? Snake plumber. Uh, Ron. The, yeah, Ron I mean, the wrestling nicknames are. Yeah. Speaking of bong what? rips. Uh, they're, they're, Oh, not Jake the Snake Palmer, but Jake the Snake, actual. Yeah. With Damien. Who I don't know fucking who that is. scared me. He's a wrestler. He had a snake in a bag. Scared the fuck out of Ron me. Ron Laramie Tunsil? Yeah. Yes. I just dropped that one. I just invented that one right now. Um, all right, Billy. So is that it? Yep. Oh, Bubba. Jared Goff Bubba. syrup. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, he put you to sleep? No, that was just that oh. was your guys. You oh, guys we wrote said that. that. Okay, yeah, oh, we did. Sean yeah. Timothy McVeigh? Put yes. this on me. Yeah. Don't try to flip this on me. <laughs> no, I just want you to be happy. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that was a good Mount Rushmore. We're back, boys. Casey Anthony we may never Sherman. Be back. Yes. Yep. Now we're just doing <laughs> just four more weeks. Yeah, Don't worry. Weeks. All right. We're numbers. So also, heads up, Jake reminded me of this today. Only three preseason games this year. Yo, that's nice. Yeah. So that's... now now my head's all fucked up. Yeah. Which one do we say, like, remember, this week is the dress rehearsal? I think they'll probably do two. Week, week two? two is going to yeah, be the dress rehearsal. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just a PSA because I was totally blindsided. That by did it. fuck. That fucks me up too. All right. Numbers. 79. 69. 71 is not eligible. 72. 72. Either is two. Eight. 71. 66. 60. I'm too near five. you. There's only like 95 in there. Thirty-four. Big poppy. Elephants look at humans like humans look Sweetness. at puppies. Love you guys.